Hello, everybody. This is Barbara Drazga together with Dan Metters of The Wholesale Formula. Tonight, we're going to be talking about bundling secrets. So, hello, Dan. Let me switch to face-to-face -to -face so we can see each other and chat for a second. Boom. Like, uh, how do I do that? Stop share. If I could make slides that good, Barbara, I'll be honest with you, I would never switch them off. Like, I can't yeah. possibly make those slides. Oh, but see, that's just my little script. I appreciate that, but that's my little scribble. I bet you outsource all of your slides, and that's why they look so amazing. <laughs> we do outsource everything, but it's not its not just to make it look better. It's because we actually just can't do much of it. So, <laughs> Yeah, you know, everybody's got a superpower, and you guys have some amazing superpowers. So uh, play to your strengths, right? Play to your strengths. I mean, it's exactly, and, and that's why we're here, right, is we're talking about one of your superpowers and something that you've used to be successful, you know, for anybody who doesn't know Barbara on this, uh, on this webinar, she is one of the most successful TWF alumni that we've ever had. And one of the, and I'm sure you guys have seen it within the community. She's one of the most active and helping community members out there. So, but, uh, you know, bundling is something where I don't, you know, we don't have a ton of experience. We've gotten better at it. We actually do have successful bundles. Yay. Um, but it's something that we know that, will can definitely help the community. So doing these types of webinars and introducing what Barbara has done to be successful is absolutely phenomenal for our community as a whole, we believe. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I didn't, uh, I'm always get a little bit like gun shy when people say stuff like that. Now I don't know what to do. Now I'm all tongue tied like you said earlier. Right? I gotta learn how to take compliments, I guess. <laughs> um, so thank you. And yes, I, I do love answering questions and helping people. However I can, I consider that my legacy because I don't have kids. So whatever I leave behind when I leave is going to end up being in the brains and the minds of whoever I share information with. So uh, speaking of information, we're going to talk about bundling tonight. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to start by actually flipping the, um, the interview roles around for just a second. And I want to ask you, Dan, what are some of the biggest concerns, fears, problems um, that you see most people talking about on on, in your Facebook groups, what are some of the biggest fears that people have about selling on Amazon? Um, I mean, easily it's, I think, I think your, your big three are definitely no profit. Like that people think there's not enough profit in, in wholesale items. Um, and then you definitely have the race to the bottom. You always hear about that concern, right? Where people are just, they get in those products and for whatever reason, uh, the, the company just doesn't protect the product like they should. You see that giant race to the bottom. Yeah. You also, uh, we see uh, where, you know, maybe, maybe you look at a product and the volume just doesn't justify the amount of inventory you have to buy, right? You need, you would need other ways to be able to move that inventory. That's, that's one of the ones we've seen. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. And then Amazon, like, you know, the, that's the big, they're the big scary guy, right? Like what, what do you do when Amazon comes on your listing? Should you stop carrying a product? And if it's, you know, think about it, like it's, it's for us, that's not happened a ton, but when it does happen, it's one of those things where we just kind of lose the line, right? It's just like, you know, we, we are able to oftentimes get out of the inventory rel relatively unscathed, but that just, that's like losing a revenue source. And it's, you know, it, that, I, I feel like this can be an answer to that problem specifically, right? And it's kind of, that's how I look at it. And it's, it's, to me, I look at it as kind of a bridge. Bundling is kind of a bridge between, um, you know, RAOA wholesale and full on private label. Because not everybody has twenty, thirty thousand dollars to fill up a container and bring it back and have that level of risk with launching a brand new product that's not tested, et cetera. So bundling is a way to um, kind of mitigate your risk, try things on a smaller scale, and then if you wanted to take a bundle that worked really well for you and go have it manufactured in you know any other country um, to reduce your cost, you're able to test it with bundling the way that I do it um, in a lower quantity. So I kind of see it as a bridge into private label if you wanted to go there. So uh, why don't I go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's the other, that's the other concern, right? And that's, that's one of the things you're, you're really, I think you can really hit on with bundling is the, the, that that's a huge concern is how many sellers are on products nowadays. Like the being able to bundle opens up, I, I, I does, I do feel like being able to bundle opens up a lot of products that you otherwise couldn't carry. Yeah. Cause there's no profit margin in it because uh, you just can't get it for what maybe some of the larger sellers can negotiate like you guys can negotiate huge discounts that little guys can't. So we can't compete against you on those listings, but I'm going to share uh, a strategy in this uh, presentation guys um, where I can show you how to get, when you get those wholesale catalogs and you run them through um, you know, uh, 
PC2 or INDBL or tactical arbitrage and you see no profit in those items, I have a trick using bundling where you can actually find profit in those items. You can create profit in low ranked, high velocity products where you add value um, and then you own the listing. So anyway, I'm just going to get jump in and get started. That's okay with you, Dan. Um, Absolutely. Now, what I'd love for you guys to do in the chat, because I won't be able to uh, mold as much as I'd like to, you know, clone myself. I think that would be bad for the world. I'd be scary for the world, right? Um, I'm going to ha have you guys ask some questions in the chat, and we'll get to Q&A at the end. Uh, otherwise, it'll kind of break up my flow, and I might not get through all of the tidbits I want to um, uh, share with you tonight. And Dan, if you could just, you know, kind of look in the chat, maybe answer things in the chat, if you wouldn't Absolutely. mind, that would be great. Thanks. And that way I can focus, hyper-focus. I'm learning how to hyper-focus more instead of uh, multitask. So I'll hyper-focus on my presentation and then we'll cycle back around to Q&A. Oh, by the way, guys, in case you just came on, before we got started, I warned everybody that this is a little bit interactive and uh, I make people answer questions. And that's going to be a lot of fun in the webinar because uh, it's going to make you think. So put your little thinking caps on and um, it's going to be fun. Every Any presentation I do, I, I I have the bubbly personality I've been told and that comes through in the presentation. So no way you're going to be able to fall asleep or watch TV while this is going on. I'm just saying. Just saying. Um, it, now, if you guys have questions, ask the questions in the QA box. Oh, QA there. box. That way we don't, we don't lose them in chat. And that, that's a good idea. We'll crush them at the end. That's a good idea. I appreciate that. Thank you. If you could watch all that, I'll delegate to you. <laughs> I'm just yep. going to go ahead and get started with uh, bundle secrets. So let me come over here and share my screen. Boom. There we go. Okay, so you all know where you are. You're in bundles, Bundling Secrets. Um, you can find me on facebook.com slash bundle secrets where I, I kind of share information going on um, with bundling with Amazon and also a brainstorming ideas for different niche markets. Now let me see if I can open up my little screen here so you can see my face. There we go. And I'm just going to make it me, Dan, if that's okay with you. Yep. Awesome. Whoops. Hello. That's just Dan. Well, we'll make it both of us. Doesn't matter. I think if you turn off your video, Dan, that will uh, that'll solve that problem. Oh, there we go. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, no. There. Okay. It's just me. Hello. <laughs> Technical difficulties. So you're here to learn about bundling as an Amazon seller tonight. I'm going to teach you um, my six steps to profitable bundles, um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, how I got started first. First, here's what you're going to learn. Here's my promise to you in the next hour, 75 minutes or so. I'm going to show you how to plan your bundles before you spend mon one money one penny on inventory. Let me say that again. I'm going to show you how to plan your bundles before you ever source anything. Uh, and that way we're keeping more money in your pocket instead of just throwing a bunch of money up against a wall and hoping something works, right? I'm going to show you how to niche your bundle concepts so you can charge higher, higher prices and make more sales. And I'm going to teach you how to keep your competitors from hopping on your listing forever and how to leverage no profit wholesale catalogs into profit. We talked about, uh, touched on that a little bit um, when I was talking to Dan. So here's the, one, the first interactive piece. Tell me a little bit about you. Um, how experienced are you selling on Amazon? Uh, and use the numbers and you can, and you can um, just put one, two, three, four in the comments. Just put brand spank and newbie is number one. Number two, you've been dabbling a little bit. Number three, you got some chops. And number four, you think you absolutely know it all. So go ahead and put that in the chat. And uh, Dan, if you could just shout out, do we have like a, an overwhelming number of brand spanking newbies or how are we looking? What, what kind of um, folks do we have on this training? Well, we have lots of, yep. It looks like we have, it looks like we have a pretty good mix, honestly, Barbara. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we got some, we got, well, we got some, we got some veterans too. We got some five people that have been on for five years. Wow. wow we got some. This is awesome. This well, is awesome. I'm really wow. excited. I'm really excited because bundling is for everybody. It's not just newbies. It's not just experienced people. Um, and it's easy enough for newbies that you don't have to be well-versed in any sourcing techniques in order to bundle. Um, and for you experienced folks who want to add another revenue stream or maybe some of your wholesale products, you know, they, they went the way of the, um, you know, they got tanked and too many sellers came on and you want to find a way to uh, kind of still serve that market through bundling you're in the right place as well. So here's the next question for me, for you. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. How do you source your product? 
are you, and you can be multiple, you can have multiple sourcing techniques too. So just put a comma, one, comma, two, whatever. Retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale, private label. And like I said, it can be a, a collection of them. So just put the different numbers in there. And let's see if we, if that is also kind of across the board. You got lots of, uh, you got lots of retail arbitrage. You got lots of wholesale. Um, it just looks like every, everybody's using, uh, looks like a variety of methods to source. Yeah. So do we have a lot of people who are using different sourcing methods or is everybody just sort of using one? No, you got, I mean, most people are using multiple sourcing methods. You, know, you got lots of RA, lots of RA and wholesale um, and some RA wholesale and online arbitrage. I and love a little it. A little bit of private label mixed in there. All right. So again, bundling is for all of you. And here's what your responses just showed me, which I'm really excited about that you're all hustlers in a good way that, you know, I believe we kind of graduate um, when we're learning something, we grad we start with retail arbitrage, especially with Amazon, right? And then we graduate to maybe OA and wholesale. Then we might graduate to bundling, private label. So I love that um, a lot of you folks are using multiple sourcing methods because it tells me you're not stuck and you're willing to learn and you're willing to take risks. So kudos to you. Yay. Thank you for interacting as well. So what I did with the last two slides is I actually modeled the first, um, my first approach to bundling. So you notice how I say I don't start with the product when I bundle. I actually start by understanding a customer uh, market, by understanding what's important to customers, by understanding uh, what they need and want, what their passions and problems are. So I wanted to understand you better so that during this presentation, I could provide you with a product, which is the presentation, that is, um, is geared towards what you need. So I basically just modeled my approach to bundling. So let's dig in and it'll make a little bit more sense as I go on. So. My background is, it all started with a rubber chicken and a dream, and yes, that is my cat, Gizmo. And if you, if you have a, a cat, put C in the chat. If you have a dog, put D, and if you have multiple, put D, 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 C, 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 C in the chat. So uh, this was the first product I sourced wholesale. I was terrified. It was three years ago, and I was doing RA when I first started on Amazon, and I didn't know what I didn't know. And I, some of you may have heard the story that I sold, I turned off my cable and I sold my couches to make room in my living room. And I would just hook up, I had a minivan I tore the seats out of and I hooked up a little trailer to it and I'd go store to store to store to store to store. I'd come back, I'd prep, I'd ship and I'd do it all over again. And that was my first Q4. And I had a crazy first Q4, but by the end of the year, I didn't know my name. Like I, I had to come up for air, you know, a, a couple of days before Christmas and ask myself what time zone I was in because I was so exhausted. And that was when I realized that, wow, two things. Wow. Amazon has some serious potential. I think I did like 35,000 something um, in sales in like six weeks, not really knowing. I mean, I had just started on Amazon and I was just doing RA and I really didn't, I didn't have a lot of the tools that they weren't even available then. Um, so I, I kind of got to fall, fell into it. But I realized two things. Amazon is a, a huge potential. And two, no way was that model, the RA model as I was doing it, no way was that sustainable for me. Because I don't know about you guys, I'm sure a lot of you would agree that we have businesses in order to support the lifestyle that we want, not to become a job, J-O-B, right? So I realized that I needed to understand how to source um, larger quantities at a lower price where uh, my, my uh, supply was sustainable and my sales were quasi sustainable to create a base of sustainability so I didn't have that up and down of I got to go run to a store to, to buy product to sell. So my first product, I was terrified. I bought this, a low quantity of rubber chickens and I created a multi-pack. Uh, so it wasn't a bundle, it was a multi-pack of three. And I sent in a really small box of some multi-packs. And um, this was the rubber, the actual rubber chicken. So here's what I discovered with the rubber chicken. This was the first kind of inkling that my brain was working on bundles. Look at Gizmo's face. That's a cat. Now there are a subset of cats that like to fetch. Turns out Gizmo wanted this rubber chicken bad. There was something about the noise that made him nuts and he wanted me to throw it and then he'd bring it back to me. He'd drag it by its foot and he'd bring it back to me. So I thought, well, gosh, there's got to be, I had a, a, another male cat a few years back that also liked to fetch. And I thought, I wonder if there are other cats out there that like to fetch or I just have weird cats. 
little bit of both, I suppose. So I asked uh, friends of mine um, who were on this cat lovers group, believe it or not, and I asked them, so who, who's, you know, who, whose cats like to go fetch? And a ton of people said yes. You know where I'm going with this, right? So I decided to put together a cat dog toy bundle or ca uh, toys that cats could go fetch. And there were cer there's certain toys that Gizmo likes. Um, they have to have long strings. They have to make a noise. They have to jingle. But something that when he drags it, it makes a cool noise. It's something about, uh, I don't know, it must be in his DNA that it sounds like he's killing an animal and dragging it. I don't know what it is. So I went and I sourced a bunch of noisy toys with strings and jingle bells, and I created a, um, a cat fetching bundle of cat toys, or some of them were dog toys actually. And it was a bundle of, for cats who like to fetch. And that's really niche, right? So that was how I got started on Amazon. It was a little bit long of a story there, but this was, it started with a rubber chicken and a dream and no, no couches. <laughs> so why bundles? Why do you want to add bundles to your inventory no matter how you're sourcing? You can sell your products and your product is the bundle at a higher price point and a higher profit margin. And then you can beat your competition to a sale by adding value to whatever it is they're selling. You can add value by creating a bundle for that niche market that they're serving, but the value in your listing and your product is going to be so much higher, um, the perceived value to the customer, than just a one-off item. You can build out related products to own a market niche. And I think this is the key to growth uh, when, you're, when you're doing wholesale, private label, it doesn't matter, is getting really familiar with a specific niche market so you can create related products and related bundles to that market. And that kind of leads to, if you wanted to someday, to sell off um, those niche bundles to a company um, that served that market on a larger level and they just wanted to acquire those bundles. Um, and also you can start creating niche websites if you have uh, bu a niche bu bundles in a specific niche but multiple bundles. Okay, so that's kind of the starting point to allow you to springboard to even bigger things at some point in time. But we're not gonna start there. I just wanted to give you, kind of get your brain thinking a little bit in the background about how to scale and build your Amazon business by focusing on niches. Okay, and then you, you get to uh, ward off, customize, you can customize your bundle to ward off what I call lazy sellers. And I'm gonna mention lazy sellers and show you some examples of what to do and not to do in this presentation. And you can provide an amazing customer experience which Amazon loves when you make their customers happy, right? So we're in terms of service and we're doing what Amazon wants us to do, which is absolutely thrill their customers. So that's just a few reasons why we bundle, the most important reasons. So don't be a, a lemming. Do you guys remember, okay, I'm aging myself here. Uh, Dan might remember this too. Back in the day, um, we, there was this video game called Lemmings. It was very addictive. Um, and there might even be like an old school version of it somewhere. <laughs> it was PC based. And basically wherever you led the lead lemming, all the other lemmings would follow, right? And if you went off a cliff, all the other lemmings would hop, hop off the cliff with you. So you don't want to be a lemming in your Amazon business where you're just a lazy seller. Um, you want to, you know, wait a minute, something feels wrong. If something's not feeling right with what you're doing, with the products that you're sourcing, et cetera, or how you're sourcing, then don't just follow the crowd. Don't just rely on, you know, people complaining on Facebook and, and you just sort of pile on. Um, be an independent thinker in your business and uh, make sure you're not being a lazy seller. Okay, so here's my unique approach to bundling. And again, um, this is kind of upside down and backwards from probably things that you hear other people say, where they say, start with a product and then you know add something to it. Um, so I, don't, I, I like to mitigate my risk. So the better that I understand the market that, that I'd be serving, the better a bundle I can create, which in turn, creates higher sales and higher revenue because I've done my research up front. I've mitigated my risk up front by doing really deep research. And the way that I do that is by identifying passions and problems. You'll hear me talk a lot about this. My entire uh, module of my bundle masterclass module one is all of the lessons are about understanding passions and problems. And um, we'll do some exercises in this presentation and there's one coming up where you're going to have to share some information. So stay tuned. Um, identify your competition. Again, that's part of the research phase. We haven't even looked at product yet. We're still on number three, identifying competition. More research about understanding the market. 
And then you build and evaluate your bundle concepts, identify your suppliers, competition proof your bundle, and then test and refine, drive traffic, automate, delegate. But before you ever touch a product, um, I teach how to understand the target market first. And I'm gonna show you some of that tonight. So you guys might have uh, might recognize Anita Breeze. Uh, she's a really a decent sized Canadian seller. And she also created the, a book on bundling for Canadian sellers. So she's been bundling longer than I've even been on Amazon. And she joined the Bundle Masterclass. And she shared the story with me uh, just before Thanksgiving, I think it was, or just, uh, not Thanksgiving, just before Halloween, um, where she sent in just 36 quantity of a unicorn themed bundle, sells for 25 bucks. Um, her cost was six seventy five because of the way she sources it. She gets over fourteen bucks profit after expenses in her pocket, and she sold out almost immediately. They started selling the day it hit the warehouse. So that's five hundred bucks net profit in one week from one bundle with just thirty six of them. Um, she's going to raise her price, and if she had more, she potentially could have sold more. So that equates to two thousand dollars a month in one bundle uh, if she had had the product in there to sell. So. I just wanted to give you an example and just give you a little bit of um, inspiration that it's not that hard and you don't need a lot of capital to bundle either if you do it um, from a customer centric point of view. So here are some types of bundles. And I talk a lot about unicorns. This year I did a fantasy theme um, Christmas front yard. So I've got a giant six foot unicorn mounted up in the tree in the front yard. Uh, if you just find me on Facebook, Barbara Draz, you'll see some pictures of it. So uh, I, unicorns is a very interesting market. Everything from little girls to grown women like unicorns. There, you know, so there are some women, a lot of women who actually have like unicorn themed weddings, for example. So here are some, you'll, so you'll see me using unicorns as an example a lot um, during my presentations. So here's it, some types of bundles you can do or solution bundles. So a bundle that solves a problem, a passion bundle, a bundle that has a, a unicorn lover and it's got every, everything in it that's unicorn related in the kitchen sink. You can put together a nice um, gift basket for that, uh, for like a, a, an Easter unicorn themed bundle, for example, just uh, as a, a gift for to give to um, during Easter time for people who love unicorns. Activity kits, so things that people get to put together, uh, ready to give gifts, so anything that is actually already wrapped up, so when they, they take it out of their Amazon box, they don't have to go find a gift bag or a gift box or a bow. It's ready, they slap the bow on, boom, they give it. Um, bulk products. So a lot of offices, a lot of B2B, Amazon um, serves the B2B market. B2B is business to business. So a lot of office managers will go on and they just want to buy, they need um, file folders, the, the hanging file folders, uh, file folder uh, tabs and colored markers and stickers for the file folders and a label maker for file folders. So you can actually put together a bulk product for a large office that's like, you know, 300 file folders and 300 hanging folders and 300 um, sets of the stickers to label them, et cetera. Um, decoration kits. So there are so many niche markets out there uh, that you can create a party decoration kit for some really, really niche, niche markets. And we're gonna do, uh, in just a second, I'm gonna have you brainstorm some niche markets. So, and then a one-stop bundle, um, which is basically, it's just everything. For instance, I just bought this house and I just wanted to, um, to have stuff done quickly. So for instance, this studio that I'm in that I'm still working on, I needed a microphone and I needed um, diva lights and I needed a new video camera and I needed a tripod and uh, all sorts of stuff. I, I bought a bundle that had everything I needed, everything I needed, um, and just bought it. In fact, I didn't even price everything out because it had everything I needed and I wanted it fast. Okay, so one-stop bundles. So seasonal topics versus evergreen. So what I do is, and, and I've actually heard, um, uh, I think I heard Dan and Eric talking about evergreen uh, wholesale products versus seasonal in one of their webinars. So this, uh, I agree with them and this kind of piggybacks off, to, off of what they talk about. So I want to have a base of evergreen bundles and by evergreen I mean they're earning me money year round. Re they're not related to a specific season. And then during the seasonal times, I can add other bundles if I want to, to give a pop in my sales during seasons. And by seasons, of course, we're right in the middle of Christmas, um, New Year's resolutions, Q1 is Valentine's Day, Easter, Mother's Day gifts, Halloween, summer vacation, back to school, etc. So I don't build a business based on seasonal first. The seasonal bundles come after I've created evergreen bundles that give me um, regular income throughout the year. 
So one mistake I see a lot of new bundles ma bundlers make is they see Valentine's Day is coming and they create, they, they go all in to create a bunch of Valentine's Day bundles, but then Valentine's Day is over and they have nothing. Their income goes bye-bye, right? And I know you guys have seen people like that too, just sell like, you know, Christmas ornaments and then they don't think about what happens the rest of the year. So my, my desire for you is to set up evergreen bundles first and then during the seasons, after you've had some practice getting your bundles done properly, then you can do seasonal bundles to add that pop of income throughout the year. Okay, so here's my step one, niche market research. And again, we're not touching product yet. I promise, we're not even on Amazon. We're not even like searching uh, the internet right now. We're just doing niche market research by understanding our market before we source. And by that I mean, you wanna identify common passions that a group of people have and common problems that a group of people have. So you would brainstorm a whole list of things people are passionate about um, or things people have problems with. Um, so for instance, uh, I live in Arizona, it gets pretty dry here. So I'm always having problems with my fingers cracking and, and dry and I like always. Uh, that's a problem that I would love to have solved. Um, passions, so I'm passionate about, uh, well yes, unicorns, that might be a phase of fad for me, but I'm passionate about photography, I'm passionate about West Coast swing dancing, um, just to name a few. So when you get a group of people who are passionate about a certain thing and you serve them a bundle of products that feeds their passion, that makes them look at your listing and say, take my money, that's your goal. But in order to do that, you have to understand their passions and their problems first. Then I conduct keyword research, and there are a lot of great keyword research tools out there. Just a few of them that I use are merchantwords.com, Google Trends, Keyword IO, but there are a lot of tools out there. I'll name a couple, uh, a couple more in uh, a slide coming up as well. So, and then you wanna look for uh, niches where you can combine high volume keywords. So I mentioned before, um, people who like weddings, uh, who also like unicorns. So that would be a mashup of high volume keywords so somebody who's having a bachelorette party, that's a very high volume keyword, bachelorette party um, decorations, but they also wanna do a unicorn theme, for example, and unicorn party supplies is also a very high traffic keyword. So I look for, um, to create bundles where I can do mashups like that so I can get streams from different high volume keywords. Okay, so let's practice. It's brainstorming time. Everybody get your keyword, uh, get your keyboard in front of you, and I want you to type in the chat, things that you're passionate about. But here's the instruction for that, pardon me. You have to niche it down. And by that, I mean, you can't just say, I like dogs. I want you to give me a breed of dog, a size of dog, an elder, elderly dog with arthritis. Um, how about you say, um, well, how, what's a problem that you have? So, um, insomnia. If you just said a problem is insomnia, you'd have to niche that down and say insomnia for women over 50, insomnia in uh, children with autism. So really niche it down. Don't just put a, a vague, you know, dogs is my passion uh, or gardening is my passion. A niche in gardening would be people who um, have tiny uh, spaces. So it could be indoor gardening, organic gardening, uh, how about those gardens? I just bought one um, during Prime Day, one of those little indoor garden things where you put the pods in it and it grows arrow gardens, right? For gardening for small spaces, vegetable gardening in more in cold climates or hot climates. So, uh, hey, Don, Dan, are you still on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We got some awesome ones coming in. We got Shout them out. Shout them out. We got landscape gardening. Ooh. We have autoimmune health. We have reupholstering old furniture. Ooh. Natural health solutions. Ah, oh, and there's Denise. Denise, I'm, I like that one. Texas Hold'em Poker Tournaments for Amateurs. Oh. oh. It sounds like me and Denise got a lot in common. Um, rare colored English Bulldogs. You wanted rare. Now, rare colored English Bulldogs, Barbara, that's niche right there, right? We got competitive swimming, um, saltwater kayak fishing. Wow, you're getting that's, that's wow. crazy. Wow, wait, saltwater kayak fishing. I'm making notes here. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and we got cooking with five ingredients or less and low sodium. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, you guys totally rock. I do a lot of these presentations. This was hands down absolutely the best responses. Normally, I have to coach you a little bit more. Give me more. 
They're, oh, wow. I mean, they're still coming. We got, I mean, helping homes replace toxic products with non-toxic products. Wow. Trance Electronic Music Festivals. Paleo Autoimmune Cooking. Cooking for the self-employed and not a lot of time. That's something I can get behind right there. I, not just because I don't have a lot of time, but mostly because I don't feel like cooking all the time. Uh, we got cooking for beginners like young newlyweds. Sounds like somebody, it sounds like we got some cookers in here. Seriously. Uh, hey, I'm a foodie kid, so bring on the cooking ones. Oh, wow. Personal protective equipment, organic gluten-free food, uh, fresh water scuba diving, bird watching in my backyard, running for beginners, uh, gluten-free cooking, specialty grommet foods. I don't even know what a grommet food is. Wait, is that an animal? Okay, whoever I, put specialty grommet foods in there, tell us what the heck a grommet is. I, I mean, for me, it's Wallace and Gromit, so it's a dog. Yeah, That's you're going to you're gonna have to hook us up here, Paul. We got toddlers with glasses. That one's unique. Ooh. Cooking prep kitchenware, yellow, or yellow lab joint issues. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Bichon Friche dog sweaters. My neighbor actually has two Bichon Friche dogs, and they are just adorable. I don't even know what that is. Is that like a little cute fluffy thingy? They're, they're little, they're just little spunky white dogs. How cute. Um, I, well, at least hers are, and they're super fun. Like, they love my kids, and <laughs> uh, always out there playing. Um, camping, we have sewing for the home. We have owning multiple cats and showing them competitively. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. that's the that crazy yeah. niche market. I mean, cat crazy niche market. That's awesome. Early retirement, age 59 or less. Gourmet cooking, organic. Desert, desert or dessert food photography. Um, table gardening for seniors with back problems. Exhausted moms. I mean, there's still 50 Holy plus responses. Cow, you guys totally rock. I am going to save the chat. Or I'm going to make sure that, that information is captured. Um, and I'll find a way to, to put all that together for everyone. And uh, so when I send out the replay, that's what I'll do. I'll have a link so that we, we can capture all this and I'll have a link to the chat um, with everything kind of cleaned out of it. So we can all start like looking into these ideas. This was absolutely excellent. I was going to say, you have to save this chat. There's just way too many awesome ideas, right? Yeah, we can't get to all of them on here. But wow, I love how interactive you guys are. And this goes back to when I was asking questions at the beginning about, um, you know, how do you source? And I mentioned that um, it shows that you guys have kind of gumption and hustle um, that you're always trying to graduate to the next level that you're multiple sourcing for multiple um, in multiple ways. You just illustrated it again by interacting in the chat and following my instructions like to the T you awesome. Don't stop brainstorming with yourself though. So as I'm doing this presentation, if you're getting ideas, jot them down on a piece of paper, that you've got next to your desk right now. If you don't have it, go grab it real quick so you don't lose those ideas, okay? Okay, so, wow. Um, I would love to be able to like take some of these ideas. I, I wrote some of the fun ones down and um, just kind of dig a little bit deeper. Like Texas Hold'em for new players. That's a crazy idea for a bundle. And by crazy, I mean crazy good. Uh, so you, you would, before you go buy any product, you need to get, dig deeper into that to see who's selling what, what are the biggest um, problems that new players have, what are their biggest fears, who's already selling something to that market, what are they selling, what can they do better, right? And uh, um, I ran across, oh, I love the five ingredient cooking. I really like that one. You could do so many variations of that bundle. It could be five ingredient Mexican cooking. Um, uh, with the recipes, you know, five recipe cards, there's so many ways, five ingredient Italian cooking, five ingredient, you can have so many variations on that one listing. That's super exciting, that one. I mean, all of them were. Saltwater kayak fishing, I'm sure there are specific tools for that. And um, I was up in uh, Sedona a couple of days ago, taking a me day, and I wandered into a realtor to look for maybe a, a rental unit to, uh, or maybe buy a little condo or something up there to get out of the Phoenix heat. And she mentioned that near one of the areas I was looking at condos, there was something called a Frisbee golf course. Has anybody heard of Frisbee golf? I, it's, I don't get, right? She had to show me. Um, so she Googled Frisbee golf. And what do you think the very first listings were, the ads across the top? Amazon listings for bundles of discs 
and these, I forget what they're called, they're like these nets that you throw it into. It's supposed to be the hole, right? Uh, it's not called a net, but um, so there were already people serving this fanatical niche market that I'd never heard of, didn't know existed on Amazon. So if you think that you're not creative and you can't come up with ideas, I'm telling you they are everywhere. Things that you didn't even know existed. And in the Bundle Masterclass, I show you how to discover those things. I give you brainstorming tools um, and show you where you can get outside of your own head and find even more information that you wouldn't, wouldn't have guessed. Okay, so anything in the chat I need to be aware of, Dan, before I move on? Nope. No, we have a bunch of Frisbee golf experts though. Are you serious? I yeah. love it. That's awesome. Okay, so the next thing you need to research is we've got all these great ideas, but don't go out and buy product. Not yet, okay? The next thing you need to dive in on your research is to identify what's being sold on Amazon with those keywords, right? So identify the keywords being used um, to get to that target market, what else is being sold, and not necessarily bundles. It could be individual items. Just look at who is selling something to that market and what are they selling. Identify sales volume for those products, and here are a couple more tools, guys. Write these down. Jungle Scout, I know a lot of you know about Jungle Scout. Viral Launch, I just got Helium 10. I have just started playing with it. It's very powerful. It's kind of next level. It's a, um, it, it, there's a lot, a lot of moving parts in Helium 10, um, so I can't tell you one way or the other how it works yet, but I, I just started it, and I'm working on it, so I'll maybe do a review of, the, of Helium 10 um, maybe in January or so to kind of pull back the curtain and then you want to identify the holes in the market so um, what's not being sold what are people saying are weaknesses in the products that you're seeing you know how could they be better um, how could the listings be better I'm going to show you an example of a bad listing and a good listing and I know if uh, you guys follow um, wholesale formula and Dan and Eric a lot of you'll recognize this this is uh, some of the stuff they talk about as well so let's just keep going step three you want to make your bundle irresistible so I want people, when they see my bundle on those search results on Amazon, to say, oh, take my money, just take my money. Um, you want to create an added value experience, um, not just on, with the bundle, but with your listing too. And, just, and then also when they open the box and they get it. The entire from what your main picture looks like all the way through the customer experience from when they open the box and say they see the product, you want it to be extraordinary. And the difference between ordinary an extraordinary is that little extra. And lazy sellers don't do that little extras. And I'm gonna sprinkle fairy dust on everybody in this webinar because boom, you are now not lazy sellers. If you were before, you are no longer after this webinar. Agreed? Good. Okay, I'm assuming you're saying yes. <laughs> so you wanna, in, um, your initial passion and problem research, the little bit that we brainstorm now, is going to reveal what the customer wants and needs. So if I were to dig into this Frisbee golf or um, the uh, saltwater kayak fishing, I have no idea about fishing. I didn't know it was called angling, referred to as angling till I started researching it, right? Um, so you want to dig deep so you can really understand what somebody was sitting in a kayak, what their problems are. You know, do their hands get cold because they're holding the kayak thingy um, when they fish? Is it a specific fishing rod and line? I don't know. But I want to research all of that so I can really understand put myself in that kayak with that next to that kayaker doing what they're doing, right? And then you want to make it unique. You want to make your bundle unique. You want to over deliver with your packaging and inserts. And I'm going to show you an actual bundle that I did um, with hand puppets and to illustrate what I did. And then you want to ask the right questions when you're looking at products to put your bundles. Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want, to, I want you to ask yourself, what can I throw in this bundle? You ever see those bundles? where it's like uh, a set of uh, wine glasses and then they throw in a keychain. Yeah, you've all seen them. Don't do that. That doesn't serve the purpose of, that, that doesn't serve the customer. And what you want to do is you want to ask yourself, and I have a series of three questions. Um, first is, what does this market need? Why do they need it? Because when you ask that why question, it's going to start, it's going to get you brainstorming other, um, to dig deeper into why they're buying a specific product so you can figure out what else they need to put in the bundle. So what else does my buyer, ideal buyer want or need? And when you answer those questions, then you're starting to build a product of your bundle. But you see the very first three steps of um, bundling has absolutely nothing to do with product. It has to do with market research, understanding a target market. Then we get into product. So do's and don'ts, me two products. Don't, don't do that, please. Don't just you know, do a garlic press because everybody else is doing them. Um, 
stuffing, I call that, just like tossing in a keychain or something completely irrelevant to your bundle so nobody else hops on it, that's not gonna sell your bundle. It's not gonna thrill your customer and it's not gonna make Amazon happy. Non-optimized listing creation. You're gonna go through all this work doing this research, make sure that you put up uh, a listing that is completely optimized. Um, basically, you're gonna use your private label, what private labelers do, and what we also teach in the Bundle, Ma Bundle Masterclass, on how to, um, everything from optimizing your photography, um, doing your keyword research, and then incorporating that in a strategic way in your title, in your bullet points, in your description, in your back end. Um, and then I see so many people do a great job on bundles and they don't have enough photos. And that means not just product photos, but lifestyle photos, photos of your product being used, being enjoyed, being opened, and then not enough margin. Uh, I see folks doing, um, and that's also related to overthinking perfectionism. Um, they get so excited about doing a bundle, they put everything in the kitchen sink in there. And there is a marketing maxim that says, a confused mind doesn't buy. So if you put too much in a bundle where a customer just can't understand the value of every little thing in there, you can actually hurt your sales. Um, and uh, you won't be able to sell it for what you need to sell it for in order to make money on it. And this is a business. So we're building uh, bundles to meet the customer needs, but also to make money, right? So overthinking and perfectionism, I see that's the opposite side of the coin. I see people overthink their bundles and then they never launch it because they want it to be perfect. Well, the, everything about selling, you know, owning a business and selling online is you try something, you test it, you tweak it, you improve it, you try it, you test it, you tweak it, you improve it, right? So there is no such thing as perfect because the, you know, the goalpost changes all the time. Here's a poor bundle example. We've all seen these. I'm sorry if this is yours, but hopefully um, learn from this presentation so that you don't do this again. So some of you might be asking uh, yourselves, what the heck is this box right in the middle? This is called Rev Seller, and it's a Chrome extension. I think it's like 100 bucks a year, but it is my absolute favorite go-to. Uh, if I had one tool that I had to use, it would be Rev Seller. I love it. It puts everything, the ASIN, um, the, the weight of the item, the dimensions, and I can put in the, the sell price, the buy cost. Okay, so I love Rev Seller. Okay, now let's get to this bundle. Everybody recognize the dollar store items? They bought two packs of stickers and a pack of foam hearts. Assuming they were selling this at Valentine's Day, uh, everything about this is, except for look at all these great pictures they have, but they didn't do any product research. Who is the target market for this? Who would buy this and why? What problems does it solve and what, or what passion does it feed? I can't answer those questions with this bundle. Okay. So let's cycle back around to a good bundle example. It's not great though, and I'm gonna tell you why. So here's what I love about it. It's, look at all these wonderful photographs, uh, the picture being used by different genders, I'm sorry, the product being used, by um, uh, descriptions. They did a really great job on the photos, on the keyword research, on the title, on the bullet points. Really great, really wonderful bundle um, listing. Here's what, we would add to this if we asked the questions. Let's say I'm the target market for this and I travel a lot and I love that it's got a carry bag and I love that it's lightweight and these little cords not gonna take up a lot of room in my uh, suitcase, right? But what is it missing? I get to the hotel and I don't know what exercises to do with this thing. So what I would add, if we answered the question, what else can you put in here that would add value to the person who's receiving it? I would want to have a laminated eight and a half by 11 with like a dozen or 15, like a row of three with five, right? Uh, yeah, five, five down, three across, 15 exercises showing me how to use these bands to hit all my major, um, all my major muscle groups. And then I can tack that on my wall. And then remember that little extra, a wallet card that had five on the front, five on the back, so I could run through, just put that wallet card in my wallet when I'm traveling and pull out my little bag of goodies and that wallet card and follow the instructions on the wallet card. That's what I would add to this bundle. And there's one other thing I would change. And if you notice the bag, the bag has their logo on it, like the name of their, their brand. I wouldn't do it exactly the way they, they did it. And I'm going to show you what I would do. And that's a great segue to the next slide. Here we go. So step four, where do you source? Viability question. Here's what you have to ask yourself. When you're putting together an evergreen bundle, which means 
Uh, you need to have access to that product year round. The number one question ability is uh, question is what's the viability? Um, do I have long term access to my bundles products? So you have to make sure if it's an evergreen product that you can get you can get those products. Okay. Um, if it's a seasonal, not as important because, you know, once it's, it's run out, you don't need those products again until the next Valentine's Day, for example. Retail stores, uh, for those of you doing retail arbitrage, if you insist on going to retail stores uh, to source products, you can do that to test bundles on small scale. But just know that the retail stores, um, actually you can go to dollar stores, but uh, I'll, I'll show you guys in the Bundle Masterclass. I have an entire... Um, directory it's my Rolodex of dollar store suppliers so dollar stores have to buy from somewhere right so there are wholesale suppliers located in the United States that you can buy dollar store items the exact items for like 49 39 59 cents um, wholesale of course uh, sourcing wholesale you can take the wholesale products that you're sourcing now and you can test like just keep a little bit of the inventory back and test out if you've got a wholesale product that's working really well test out a bundle to that niche market using that um, product as a base. Liquidation-based products. So um, the thing with liquidation-based is when I buy liquidation, I buy it all. So once it's a liquidation product is gone, it's gone. So I have these uh, um, zombie mugs that are his and her zombie mugs. And I do multiple different bundles out of these zombie mugs, not just one uh, bundle. That being said, I bought them all. So I had to buy 900 zombie mugs, but they're his and her, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a set. So if you're in a position to receive those and to, you know, a higher purchase, you can lock down that product and then create multiple bundles. Um, manufacture, you can get things manufactured in the U.S., Canada, China, Mexico, Taiwan, Guatemala, you name it, every country, Poland, every country, Italy, every country in the world manufactures some sort of product. So don't just uh, rely on a lot of people talk about, well, yeah, we, so we, we private label from China. China's not the only game in town, Okay. Um, brand owners who will white label. I'm going to show you a few examples of this, and I'm going to give you a, website, a couple of websites, too. You can start looking for white labeling. So uh, white labeling is taking an existing product, um, and that manufacturer will um, just put your company name on their existing product, right? And then that you can sell it under your brand then. That's called white labeling. Etsy is a great place to find unique products. There are these people who are manufacturing their own products by hand, or they have a team of you know, friends and family members making these really cool, unique products that you can't buy wholesale. So find those on Etsy and um, uh, create a relationship with these suppliers or these wholesalers. Um, actually, they're artisans on Etsy and negotiate wholesale pricing, and nobody can copy that bundle. Um, if it's based on that that kind of product advertising promotion companies I'm going to give you a couple of links in just a second here So you guys ever go to trade shows and they give away these pens or you know a cell of uh, one of these little pop sockets or whatever Right, and they they put their brand name on the pen So what if instead of putting a brand name on this pen you had let's say you were doing a back-to-school bundle for um a new college students female who liked unicorns to stick with the unicorns uh, you you could do all these back to school supplies, but have somebody off of Fiverr or Upwork draw you a really cute unicorn with a little saying on it, so you own that image. And then instead of putting a logo on a pen, you put that image on all of these advertising specialty products. Okay, so I'm going to give you some exact examples here. So I was looking for um, I have a betting company, so I sell betting. And um, I was looking for something to put with a little kid's uh, comforter set, little boy's comforter set that had sharks on it. And I wanted a shark pillow. So I went, by the way, you're going to hear me say this a lot. Google is your friend. If you get stuck on something, um, go to Google and type in wholesale shark plush, wholesale plush, wholesale whatever, manufacturer, fill in the blank. So I found this, Joysu, write it down, J-O-I-S-S-U dot com. Now, this wouldn't work for me because this is actually a bundle. Uh, when you buy this, you get six different animals. Uh, I just wanted the sharks. But I wanted to give you an example of what you could pay for something like this. So the cheapest price for just two gross, 288 pieces, is 54 cents. Now think about it. If you wanted to make a bundle with these six sea animals, Right, uh, and you know, you, you figure out your target market. Um, it would probably be like the, the grandmas and the mothers would buy it for their little kid, their little boy maybe who likes sea life. 
um, and he likes, and you put it together with maybe a, a Jacques, Jacques Cousteau map of wherever, I don't know, I'd have to think about that a little bit, but do you, you create a bundle around uh, a little boy who loves whales and sea lives, uh, you know, sea creatures and aquariums, etc. Okay, so this was a two second search for wholesale plush. Here's another example. This is a private, I searched for private label baking supplies. And what I found was uh, in yellow, I highlighted, and this is an example of white labeling. So this private, uh, this clabber girl says they will own, they'll take their product and they'll put your brand on their product. And they call private label products available in a wide range of ingredients, sizes, and packaging. And that's key. Because let's say you wanted to do a five ingredient bundle for something, five ingredient cakes or cupcakes, but you wanted to make them sample sizes, not put full size things in there. It looks like this clapper girl um, will let you source things in smaller sizes. Now the cool thing with that is that you can put an insert in there um, to get repeat sales if you only have sample sizes of things in there and that person likes, uh, the people who buy it like the bundle, then they'll want to order more because it's smaller sizes. So you kind of build in the um, repeat sales business um, for bundles like that. So the other one on the right hand side is traditional baking. And it says for clients do not require their own recipe. Um, so they make uh, cookies. So they will, um, they're a store, a distributor of brands, 20% of items sold in the United States. So you can put your brand on their cookies, just as an example. So here's another example of a, a quick bundle. I was doing back to school research and it was kitchen organization tools is what I was looking for, for um, uh, girls going to college for the first time. So they're freshman girls and they're gonna live in a dorm or a shared uh, apartment with uh, other, other uh, college students. So I went to AliExpress and I typed in kitchen organization and I found these cute little organizers uh, for the sink and for hand towels and for keys in different colors. So I could have three variations of this bundle or four, white, blue, green, and pink with three or four different items in there. And then maybe I would put a cheat sheet for um, uh, surviving your first year at college as a freshman girl right? You can put a little, have something designed that you can put in there that adds value to this or how to organize your kitchen when you're living in a house of five girls, something like that. Okay. Off the top of my head. So let's keep going. Um, so that was just a little bit on different places you can source products, just some ideas. So now we want to get to competition proofing our bundles because if we're lazy sellers and we just, you know, throw a bunch of stuff in there that anybody can get the same place and source where we can get them, then it, your bundles are going to fall flat or you're going to have competition on them. Okay. So here are some general rules of thumb. Source from various suppliers. So sor don't source all of your products from one wholesale supplier. You want to source from various suppliers to kind of mix it up to make it harder for the lazy sellers, the lemmings, to jump on your listing. You want to create unique packaging. Uh, instead of just, you know, throwing stuff in a poly bag, create a, a, a packaging that um, adds value to the bundle itself and then put a custom piece in there. For instance, one of the custom pieces I put in the zombie, his and her zombie mugs is I do a, a breakfast bundle with that. So I, a white labeled coffee, but I had the smaller, it was the smaller like little two ounce uh, ground coffee. And then I put a zombie um, label on it, you know, zombie coffee label. And then uh, we put, uh, you can go just Google uh, create a crossword or create a word search. And we had a crossword, I had a crossword and a word search created all with using zombie terminology. And then I used Vistaprint to print those out on heavier cardstock. And then uh, from AliExpress, I bought a bunch of pens that had zombie images on them. And that was, that was my bundle. I think we might've put one more thing in there. Coffee, oh, we had cookies. They weren't zombie related, but if I could buy, find zombie cookies, that would be really cool. Um, so anyway, that was just an example of how we, um, when people are, um, my, the research showed when people are having their coffee in the morning, they feel like a zombie and they're half dead, right? We wanna help them wake up and transform into this lovely person at the end of it. So what do people like to do when they're drinking their coffee in the morning? They like to read the paper, they like to do a puzzle, they like to munch on something. So that was how we built the bundle based on putting ourselves in, in that 
kitchen, you know, at that kitchen table with somebody who's just not a morning person and they got these coffee mugs, just kind of a, you know, a cute, fun gift. And um, it helps them transform from zombie to um, to real person. And the target market for that are people who like zombie uh, television shows, a ton of them, right? Zombie movies and zombie uh, gamers, right? So people who play video games with zombies, related zombie um, video games. Okay, so what else can you put in there? Puzzles, flashcards, planners, calendars, checklists, cheat sheets, certificates, recipes. I'm gonna show you where we used an adoption certificate in a bundle that I did with puppets. So here is one example, and you can go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF, and uh, you can see a bundle that I actually created. Just click on course outline when you're on the site, and I show you, uh, it's a video of this exact bundle. So I had uh, plush puppets, six puppets, six different animals, a uh, frog, a bear, uh, a pig, uh, a couple of others, I don't remember all, a monkey was one of them. So what we did was we put them together, and then I created an adoption certificate and had it printed it out on this pretty paper that had like this gold, don't just print it out on junk paper, right? Because this child is going to hang that up in their room. And in the, on the adoption certificate, we put um, name each of your animals. So we put, you know, hi, my name is um, so-and-so and I am the proud parent of, and then they would name their, um, a dog named whatever, a bear named whatever, fill in the blank. So we made it personal. We did that little extra so that the child is now interacting with this, this uh, experience. They're having experience with these puppets, not just puppets. And then the other thing we did was we made an adoption box. So we had to package these somehow. Instead of just throwing them in a poly bag, we put them in a cute box. And if you've ever gone and adopted an animal, like I know a lot of you have, because I have too, uh, and you leave there and the animal is maybe in a box that has holes in it. So on the outside of the box, we printed black holes to make it look like air holes. For the puppets and then when you we had it designed so that you could open it and fold it back and when you folded the lid back on the inside of the box we had printed a stage so now the box becomes part of um, the the experience of having these puppets now they can play with their auntie or their grandmother or the stage and they make it stories and we can get um, word, keywords in there like cosplay um, and then the the next thing we did was uh, we created, and this was a customer of mine, a local customer saw, um, was over at my house and they saw, they were picking up bed sheets, I think, and they saw these puppets. And she said, oh my gosh, I want some of those for my dad's golf clubs. I think it was her dad, golf clubs. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, these are good. So I went to uh, the Goodwill and I bought one of the big, you know, wood golf clubs and then the, the putter thingies, the little ones, just two different sizes. That's how much I know about golf, about as much as I know about Frisbee golf. And um, I took them home and tested, and those suckers fit right on those golf clubs. So I created a different uh, listing all together with these. I was able to, like, sell just the puppets alone. I think we might have put a um, uh, golfing tips, but it was like a joke, funny golfing tips. And we sold them as golf club covers. So this is just a couple of ideas. This is just one product that I created a couple of bundles from. And, again, you can see that at bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And up at the top, click on course outline. You can watch the whole video after this presentation. Okay, think promotional companies. Here's another way to lock down your bundles. So let's say using the example of, um, let's say a, a, a young, a tween girl, she, got, she has a cell phone. She's like 14 years old, 13 years old, and she loves unicorns. Back to the unicorns again. You could go to a promotional company after you've had somebody does, like create a really cute unicorn graphic with a cute little saying on it. And then you can put that saying on four or five different related products to cell phones. So you could put that cute little unicorn image that you own on a pop socket, on the earbuds, on the cell phone holder, on uh, what else do we have here? Um, this little you know, holder here, uh, ring stand, right? Um, this little card holder. But instead of putting a logo on it, you're actually putting an image on it. And then you create a bundle with these types of products, promotional products. And it could just be these promotional products. And on the right-hand side, I wanted to give you an idea of the different types of things that you can print stuff on. And by the way, you can do this in very small quantities. And look at the prices on these. $1.45 for a set of earbuds. I mean, the prices are really reasonable. And um, the more you buy, the more you save because the bigger the print runs are. Um, but you can still test a small amount, a couple of dozen. And then if it works, you can go back to these exact um, promotional company that you bought them from and have more produced. But these are some of the types of things 
that you can create at promotional companies. Here are more categories from just one promotional company. Um, if you can, I mean, everything from sports equipments to water bottles, tote bags, now the drawstring bag. Now remember I said to you on that uh, listing with the, uh, the workout bands that there was one thing I would do differently on the bag. Can you guess what that is? I wouldn't just put the brand name on the bag. What would I do? Put it in the chat. How can we make that bag even more relevant and added value to the customer who's buying it? Put it in the chat. So uh, he had to print these bags somewhere. So why not print, you know, uh, have somebody um, design this cute, like uh, bodybuilder logo with some, or not logo, but image with something cute on it. And then his um, brand name underneath it but put an image on it, not just the brand name. So when I'm walking through the airport carrying that little bag and it's got a unicorn on it that's all buff and has, <laughs> has like guns, how cute would that be? People might ask me, stop me and ask me where I got it, for example. So that's another way that I would make that, um, that workout bundle we saw early, earlier just a little bit better. Again, that extraordinary step. All right, let's keep going. Hey, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Put it in the chat. Are you still with me? Are you here? Say, I'm here. Are you guys following, taking notes like crazy, right? Everybody okay? Everybody following? Not only do we have a whole bunch of people who are still here, we have a whole bunch of excited people, Barbara, which is yeah. good because you're really giving them a whole bunch of content here. Yes, uh, not only do I, I, I do try to walk my talk. So when I say over deliver to your customers, that is exactly what I try to illustrate during my presentation. So I hope that I'm hitting the mark. And then I, I've been told that I have an energy that's infectious. I don't know if that's good or bad. Maybe we should use the word contagious. No, I don't think that's any better either. <laughs> but this is my training style. Um, and uh, it's just how I engage with people is because I'm excited about this stuff. So I think it comes through in, uh, in my training. So, <laughs> Okay, so more custom ideas. I just got these um, this morning. The mints on the right-hand side, hospitalitymints.com. I just got the email this morning. And look at all the cool things you can put on um, these mints. So look at these dollars. That's really cute, right? So there's all these things that they have images that are ready-made, ready to go. You can buy bulk bags or you can put your own image. So unicorn mints, hello. You put unicorn mints, if you're doing a unicorn uh, Valentine's Day bundle and you have a bunch of chocolate and mints and all sorts of things, but with a really, really cute, like maybe put it in a, um, instead of a basket, I'm just brainstorming off the top of my head. It could be like a unicorn shaped bowl or coffee mug that has a horn sticking out, right? Um, so you can have all sorts of fun. Um, so hospitalitymints.com, write it down. And then another email I got this morning was onlinelabels.com. They're having a, some kind of special, some kind of deal. That's this site here. But go dig into their, because, um, dig into their, their website because they have a lot of product photos, uh, ideas for labels that they've done for other, um, other customers. So that might give you an idea of types of labels to do and types of products and, and packaging to put them on. And remember, oh, on vistaprint.com, I got a ton of stuff at vistaprint. That's over here in the lower right-hand side. And I can get, you know, just a couple of sheets of labels if I'm trying out just a couple of dozen. Um, then I'll go to vistaprint and I'll, I'll pay a little bit more and I'll order a small quantity. But then if it hits, I can um, order a large quantity. And again, this is why I like having bundling as my step to private label because I'd have to order a lot of quantity direct from factory for private label. Um, and then my, my capital is tied up with maybe one or two products, right? But with bundling, because I can do a bundling on a, with lower quantities to test the market out, it's mitigating my risk. I can spread, um, I can try a bunch of different stuff and then what hits I can double, triple down on. Uh, and you know, I'm a business person, so I do like mitigating my risk. I don't believe in making emotional decisions in my business. So I test, I research, 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 try, test, 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 research, 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 some more, try, test, test, test. It's all about the numbers. So I don't fall in love with um, a market or a product idea or a bundles. I always um, put numbers on it to make sure that what I'm doing has the keyword searches and is viable in, the, in a competitive market, for example. So uh, Google is your friend. You hear me say that a lot. Custom printed, fill in the blank. So do we have any comments that I need to address in the chat before I go on?
Okay, I guess not. <laughs> hmm. Not a whole. We got a whole lot of questions in QA, but I assume oh. we'll, get, we'll get to those. All right, we'll get there, kids. Keep putting the Q questions in there. I will bang through them as many Q and A questions as I can. Um, so, step six: versions maximize your bundle concept, just like I did with the uh, the zombie mugs and with the um, the puppets, and pretty much most of the products that I have. I'll try to find. Um, a mashup for so I can do multiple um, concepts. You want to create various versions for fanatical niches. So, for instance, just as an example, the um, the kitchen uh, the, the kitchen, kitchen uh, thing example, where you have the, the little uh, the cloth right and the hang cloth hanger and the little thing for your kitchen sink right. And the variations were just a different color. It can be something that simple. But here's what happens if you have, for instance, um, the zombie mugs. So if you have a product that let's say you source three dozen of them and you find that it does well, but you can create, if you create multiple versions of that, now you can go back to the supplier and instead of buying three dozen, you can buy a gross, which is 144 and negotiate the price down because now you can use that base product across three or four or five different bundles, right? So you, you leverage the quantity instead of just, you know, tripling down on one bundle concept. Now you can spread that across multiple and negotiate the price down with your supplier for the main bundle item. And that also lets you leverage reviews with your listing variations. So if you have a great review on the, the pink kitchen bundle for those new college student girls, then, um, then you can roll out a blue one and a white one and a yellow one and not have to try to get um, new reviews on new listings for each color variation. Make sense? Is everybody, everybody following me? How you guys doing? Are you having fun? <laughs> That's the important part. You're learning and having fun, I hope. That's my goal. Have you learned a couple things and are you having fun? We got, a, we got some yeses coming in. Douglas says yes. Mary says yes. Mickey says yes. Terry says whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh, I love that one. Okay. Oh, now they're flying in. We got lots of yeses and yeppers and loving it. It's doing a great job, Barb. Ooh, thanks. All right. And that's my goal is to have fun when I teach is, uh, and also to teach relevant content because it's not all, you know, um, giggles and uh, unicorns and rainbows <laughs> in business, but it, it, there can be a spice of that. And in, in when, we, when we learn new things, for me, if I'm having fun learning something, then I'm much more likely to keep wanting to learn it and to implement it. I know you guys, a lot of you guys understand what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so, Let's move on. Don't be a lazy seller. You know, I'm going to say this multiple times. Don't just throw junk into poly bag and send it in. I wish if I had one wish for you, it would be um, to be successful and earn more money in your business and have the freedom that that income provides to you. I think that's what we're all after, right? Freedom. Now, there is one more thing that I promised I would share with you, uh, and I normally don't share that in my presentations on the Bundle Masterclass, but because you guys all came from Dan, from the Wholesale Formula, I know a lot of you guys are doing wholesale sourcing, so I'm gonna share with you what happens when you get um, a, supplier's spread, a supplier's catalog in CSV format and you run it through one of these programs and it shows all these great ranks, all these really low ranking products, um, with, but way too many sellers on it and you can't make any profit. Or maybe Amazon is on it and you can't make any profit, right? What do you do? You bundle. So what I do instead of sorting that spreadsheet by how many sellers or what my profit margin could be or what my ROI, I search that spreadsheet by BSR, best seller rank. So I wanna see what's selling best, what's selling really well. Um, and then I also wanna see the other end of the spectrum, what's not selling well from that supplier. Because, and here's why. So there's two, th two ways I approach it. First, um, I'll say, okay, what's selling well, but then I, I put my research hat on and I say, okay, why is it selling well? What problem does it solve? What passion does it feed? Who's buying this? Let me understand who's buying this and why are they buying it? Are they buying it to solve a problem in their life? Now, what else do they need to solve that problem, right? Now we're going into brainstorming products, right? So you don't just go to the product and say, a lot of people will look at the people who bought this also bought. Well, they might have also bought something completely unrelated because you know they were doing shopping for Christmas for another family member. Right, so you can't rely on that because looking at people who bought this also bought, you're not getting into the heart and the head of that user, of that person who's buying that product. 
So I teach in the Bundle Masterclass, the, very, the entire first module, all the lessons, is helping you learn the right questions to ask in the right order so you can gain a full understanding of who your ideal buyer is and why they're buying it and then your competition. So that's what I do with CSV files. Now the other end of the spectrum, I go down to the list of the things that aren't selling well because they're not selling well for the supplier either, right? So it could be that that supplier um, isn't marketing that product to their current uh, wholesale buyers or they just they haven't found traction yet or because it's not a good uh, seller's rank, wholesale suppliers don't buy it because maybe they don't know how to bundle. So you, it gives you leverage with the wholesale supplier, with the brand owner to say, hey look, I see you've got some really great selling products um, and we're thinking of doing some bundling, how can we work together to sell more of that product? And by the way, we might try some of your lower selling product here, or maybe if you have a new product coming out, we'd like to try that product too and create bundles right out of the gate for your new product. So what that does is it allows you to buy some of the product they may have sitting in a warehouse that's not selling because you know how to bundle. After you take the bundle masterclass, you know what you're doing. So you could turn that into a listing that actually creates sales for them where um, their other sellers, their lazy sellers aren't doing that. But then you can leverage quantity buys because you're now buying not just one product but multiple products and you're building a relationship with that brand owner so you can say, hey look, and when you have new products coming out, can we take a look at those to see what bundles we can put together and have an exclusive maybe on that product for the first three months? So you can have the initial listing plus bundle versions, another listing with bundles. So there's, by looking at a supplier's CSV file, a catalog, from a different perspective, from a bundling perspective, it opens up possibilities that don't exist in straight wholesale. Okay, so that was hopefully I over delivered in everything that I said I was going to deliver during this webinar. Do you guys feel like you got content? Did you get a lot of ideas? Did you guys, uh, do you feel like you know a little bit more now than you did when you first came on? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Did you get some ideas? Did you learn something? I hope you learned not to be a lazy seller. You got a ton coming in here, it says. Hey. Most definitely learn stuff. Excited. Idea overload. Yes, great stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Great stuff. Absolutely on all counts. Woohoo, awesome. Well, I believe it's you rock. Oh, thank you. Well, I believe it's important that we have a process that 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 overload. I get it. I, I'm on overwhelm a lot of times too. Uh, you know, it's part of being in business sometimes, I think. Um, so I think it's important on having a process to walk through when we're when we're learning something new so we can just go step by step by step. Um, segue into if you didn't figure it out, I was gonna do that. Become a master bundler. I'd like to invite you to join the Bundle Masterclass. You can go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And here's why you want to go to slash TWF. If you wait just a second, I'm going to show you some cool stuff that Dan and I are going to be giving away to you when you enroll in the Bundle Masterclass. Um, there's limited time for you to do this. So hang in. Let me show you what we're going to give you as a bonuses. But let me also show you everything you're going to get, Vanna. So we call ourselves master bundlers and master bundlers in training. When you come into bundle masterclass, um, you are called a master bundler in training and we walk you through my process. Um, so, and then in the Facebook group, you can ask questions of all the master bundlers and me, of course, who are in there, who've gone through the program and come out the other end successfully and are making money with their bundles so they can help you along as well. So my goal for you is to become a master bundler. And this is what it looks like inside of the program. And remember I told you module one, this is just module one. Everything in module one is about understanding your target market. That's just module one. There are, I think, nine or 11 different modules that all cover everything from niche market discovery. Every single process from understanding a niche market all the way down to automating and delegating. There's a module for all of these and then lessons within there. And I even interview people um, like Ian Bauer. If you guys are familiar with the wholesale formula, um, Ian Bauer uh, is a uh, is a guru on outsourcing and on hiring people and on delegating. He actually did a video for us as well. So we have experts because I'm the first to tell you, I don't know everything. I don't. So instead of trying to learn everything, which is just unrealistic, I go find out people who are smarter than I am at whatever they're really good at, whatever their superpower is, and I have them come on and they share their information in the Bundle Masterclass as well. So it's not just me as a talking head. You get all sorts of other cool people on there as well. And the course structure, there's eight training modules and then lessons within there. And then I believe that we learn best 
when we implement. So, and I illustrated that during this presentation by giving you exercises to do, to do. And I'm sure, I know that you guys felt that you were engaged a lot more instead of just listening to me in the background with, you know, prices right on, right? Um, so I make you do some lessons or I offer you to do some lessons at the end or some exercises at the end of the lessons because I think it really kind of solidifies what you're learning when you immediately implement it. Show and tell videos. So I will get on, I do these really cool unscripted Look over my show, shoulder, show and tell, brainstorming. So one of my superpowers is, I don't know, it's the way my brain is wired. I am off the charts creative. When I start brainstorming, uh, you have to capture it. So I do a ton of those brainstorming videos uh, where I just get on um, to uh, get on the web, get on Google, get on Amazon, and I say, okay, this is how I bundle. This is how I find cool niche markets. And I show you how I power work through the entire process in like an hour and a half. Uh, and it's loads of fun because we never know where we're going to end up. You know, I'll start with some of the ideas that you guys gave me. I'll just take some of these ideas and we'll say, okay, let's brainstorm. And at the end of that hour and a half, we end up somewhere completely different with a ton of bundles built. It's a lot of fun. I do a, ton, a lot of those in the bundle masterclass. Um, worksheets and checklists because I'm a big um, I'm a big list maker. I have to check things off and I know some of you are too. And I want to hit all of your learning styles. So the people who like to see things, the people who like to hold things and write things. Um, I want to make sure that uh, all of our learning styles are being fed. Again, it increases your chance of success if I teach you in a way that you best learn. So I do my best to do that. And then of course you get the private Facebook group with us fellow master bundlers, lifetime access to the course in the group. And I am always updating how many, how many would agree that Amazon changes something every day? <laughs> like, so I am in the, in the mud with you guys, as it were. Um, I am in the, in the unicorn clouds with you. I am a full-time Amazon seller. I have a few different businesses, but um, am, I'm a full-time Amazon seller. I am in the trenches. I am doing it every single day. Uh, so when something new happens or, or I, I learn something new, I bring it to you in the Bundle Masterclass. Um, Okay, so bundle planner, here's one of the things you get is bundle planning template, how to plan out your bundles, and again, that it's all about the numbers. So this is in a spreadsheet format, so it's gonna calculate things for you and help you brainstorm out and help you not be emotional about your bundles. It's all about the numbers in the end. The private Facebook group, you're gonna be welcome in uh, when you join the uh, Bundle Master class so that um, uh, all the other bundlers are just gonna pile on and say, how you doing? You get to tell us all about your business so that we can help you answer your questions based on where you're at. Whether you're a newbie, a beginner, no matter how you're sourcing, if you're experienced at sourcing, if you're experienced at selling, um, we're there to help you. Um, there's a lot of really cool, smart people in there besides myself. And then you're going to be supported by people like Jerry Mills. And you might recognize some of the names uh, of these, uh, these Bumble Masterclass students because some of them are in a lot of the Facebook groups answering questions about wholesale and private label. Um, and I love their hearts because they're always willing to share. Uh, so uh, the real cost of education. How many of you guys went to university? They call it college in the U.S. Who went to college? Who paid lots and lots and lots and lots of money to go to college? I did a student exchange in Germany. I have two majors, or I'm sorry, a major and two minors. Uh, I, it took me six years to get through and I ended up on the other end with a ton of student debt because you know I thought it was a good idea to leverage student debt. <laughs> so tens of thousands of dollars that translated over 12 years it took me to pay off into a significant amount of money, tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars for a degree that I really don't use. <laughs> so I know a lot of you can relate to that. Um, so the real cost of education is when you take uninformed action. If you just start like, oh, I'm gonna go bundle on my own and you do it the wrong way, um, it's gonna cost you money to learn those lessons and then you're stuck with a lot of inventory you can't do anything with because you didn't do it the right way. So a lot of times it's just best to to have someone coach you, to have someone show you the way and um, light the way for you and give you your process and checklist to follow. Getting unsuspended. Boy, if you, I know some per, somebody in the Q&A has undoubtedly asked me about UPC codes. If you use a third party UPC code, you could potentially get suspended by Amazon because Amazon changed their rules for bundles and private label products that you must now file for a GTIN exemption. And if you don't know that, and you just go buy some something off of eBay, UPC codes, and Amazon catches you. They can not only shut down your listing, but your entire account. How much is your account worth? 
the lifetime value of your account, your Amazon account. Calculate that number, that six figure, seven, eight, nine figure number. It's not worth taking those risks. I know what the Amazon terms of service are and I make sure you do. It's all, I don't let you guys operate in the gray area because again, my number one goal for you is to be successful. Live events can be costly to attend and I go to a lot of them and I pay happily thousands and thousands of dollars in travel costs in going to these live in um, registering for the events in hotels and I can you know I'm a single girl um, I can kind of pick up and go with the pet sitter kind of on standby and I have that freedom so I go to a lot of these events and I take in that information and when I learn something new that's related to Amazon sellers I will bring that into the bundle master class private Facebook group and share that information with you and then high price courses you know two, three, ten thousand dollars so worth the money. But not everybody is in a position where maybe you're just starting out, right? And you're not in a position to take money out of your capital, um, uh, your investment capital um, for products to uh, to purchase a high-end training course. You're not quite there yet. So this the bundle master class is kind of a step in that direction to get you learning a new skill so you can build up your capital. So when you're ready for a high-end training course um, that's specific to wholesale or private label, then bundling has helped get you there. And then learning what major retail stores do without the cost of importing. Here's what I want you guys to do. Here's your homework after this. Um, in the next few days, go into a big box store and go to the Christmas section where they have all the Christmas gifts Look at all the bundles in there. Retail's got it down. Retail's been bundling stuff forever, right? We just never noticed as, as consumers. But now's a perfect time to go kind of look at, wow, retail, this is what retail does. You get to learn what retail does um, in bundling, in the Bundle Masterclass. So, uh, Debbie Tremblay, uh, she was actually a newbie, uh, and she liked my energy in the course, and she did, she had been doing some bundling before, but when I taught her how to do the customer-centric approach, I call it the customer-centric approach to research, uh, it changed the bundles she was making um, and increased the viability of the bundles that she was already selling and then the new bundles. And of course, I'm, uh, I'm always highly energetic. Um, I try to tone it down sometimes. But it's, and this is me without coffee. And then Maria Tori, uh, she'd kind of been dabbling a little bit in bundles here and there and trying a little bit. Um, and she just needed that process. She needed that step-by-step -step approach, right? She, she tried bundling, uh, but then once she kind of uh, plugged into the customer-centric approach, it filled in the blanks in the way she was doing it, and she was more successful with her bundling. She is more successful with her bundling because of the bundle masterclass. Enough blowing of my own horn. I know you're of hearing from me so I'm gonna give you some stuff How, who wants stuff I'm gonna give you some VIP bonuses when you enroll for the bundle masterclass uh, you only have a few days I'm gonna tell you what the deadline is just a second but let me tell you all the cool stuff I'm gonna pile on here you're gonna get VIP bonuses from me and from Dan so I'll tell you what mine are and then Dan's gonna tell you what his are I'm gonna give you 10 custom done for you bundle concepts. I usually have my, uh, my little brainstorming journal here in front of me, but I can't help it. Uh, my brain kind of operates in bundle mode now continuously. So I have this entire notebook full of bundle. I don't have the time or the capital or the energy to follow through on all of them, quite honestly. So I'm going to share the wealth. Uh, I'll give you 10 done for you bundle concepts. And what that means is I don't, tell you exactly every product to buy. I leave enough ambiguity so that everybody who gets this bonus can put their own spin on it. And I give you product ideas for each of these uh, bundle concepts, plus um, links to websites that you can find other product ideas. I give you variation ideas, uh, different target market ideas. I help you answer the questions, who would buy this and why, and what else do they buy? Remember, who would buy this? Why are they buying it? What else would they buy? And I kind of fill in all those blanks with you to kind of give you a supercharge, get started with, right away with bundling as you're working through the Bundle Masterclass. Okay, well, here's what else I'm gonna give you, my dollar store Rolodex, my dollar store supplier Rolodex. For all of my lovely retail arbitrage folks out there, nothing wrong with going to the dollar store. I get it, I've been there, done that. I live behind one now, so I walk over there to get stuff all the time for myself. Um, but I'm gonna show you where to buy where the dollar stores buy. So you can get those dollar store items you've been paying a dollar for, for like 39, 49 cents. Okay, that, yeah, that's one of my bonuses for you is my Rolodex of those suppliers. And by the way, every one of these suppliers have small minimum order quantities. 
Another VIP bonus. Uh, we're putting together now, every year I do an events calendar. So um, I've got one student who, Kathy, Kathy Forsey, and uh, she has an events calendar up on her wall in her office that shows her the upcoming movie launches, the niche special events, holidays, festivals, TV shows, seasons, um, even the things that are hap happening astronomically, right, with the moons and the tides and whatever. So we put together an events calendar every single year that's going to give you all of that information with the dates. So, for instance, when The uh, Walking Dead's new television season is coming out, right, there's always going to be a pop in uh, search terms for Walking Dead and zombies. And when it's Shark Week, this calendar is going to remind you, get shark stuff done a month before. Get those bundles done a month before. Of course, we'll have all the Easter and Valentine's um, dates in there for 2019. But uh, this events calendar is searchable. It's sortable in Excel format. So you can just sort by um, date or by whatever kind of niche you want to be in. Okay, another VIP. Yes, I keep over delivering. I'm going to do, a, I just decided this. I'm going to do a live Valentine's Day bundles brainstorming webinar. Are, say that three times fast. So guys, it, Valentine's Day is a couple months away. I know, weird, right? I can't even wrap my brain around it. It is the perfect time right now to do your research if you're going to do Valentine's Day bundles. And this is going to be one of those live, unscripted, let Barbara loose with her brainstorming. Uh, there's so much fun and it's completely interactive. So you guys get to toss ideas around with me and then we just get on Google and I show you, okay, this is how I do it. This is what we find. And we see what we find. We'll start with some of these cool ideas that you guys came up with in this webinar. Dan, Dan the man, those are my bonuses from you. So you get the uh, dollar store supplier Rolodex, the done, 10 done for you bundles, which is crazy, um, and the events calendar and the live uh, bundles brainstorming webinar for Valentine's Day. And then Dan. Are you unmuted, Dan? I am absolutely unmuted. No, with uh, well, we wanted to contribute a bonus as well. To be perfectly honest, with the amount of content, awesome content the Barbara's course provides, and the amount of awesome bonuses that she's already giving, it was hard to just find something else to put on there because it's already an amazing value. Like Barbara's course is is honestly, it is way underpriced for what it is, and mm -hmm. uh, you can see exactly what you guys are getting. But we still wanted to add something to it because that's the thing is we want people whenever they whenever they buy something that you know particularly that we suggest we want them to literally be able to hit the ground running. So we wanted to contribute um, one pro, uh, wholesale formula list. Now what this list is it's a list that is the uh, exact cr product or it's a products that fit our guidelines. What we're looking for in a product like no Amazon sells more than fifty times a month. Uh, more than twenty dollars, so it's all the products in between one zero zero one and thirty thousand. Now you get to choose a segment of that list, say one to ten thousand, and that's the segment you'll get to see those products, the supply, and uh, be able to track those products back to their suppliers to be able to set up relationships. So these are like having sourced products, but it's even better than that because one of the things that we truly value is we value people who take action. So rather than just give one of those lists, now bear in mind, we, those lists are not available. We have not sold those lists in months. And the only way to get this list is by signing up for Barbara's course through our link. Now we used to sell these lists for $150 each, but we wanted to make it more awesome because we love when people take action. So instead of getting one list for the people who bought through our link tonight, and, and went ahead and decided to take that action, we actually want to give you two lists. You get two list selections where you're able to go through and you, you can choose, you know, sports and outdoors, uh, products 001 to 10,000, and home and kitchen, uh, you know, 20 to 30,000. And what that gives you is it gives you a lot of different products to look, like, or to look at that you know are selling well, have uh, limited competition and Amazon doesn't carry. So you've got a, just a, a massive list of already sourced products to yeah. go ahead and hit the ground running in this bundle masterclass. Okay, so um, when, they, when they register for bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF to get those bonuses, how do they get the list? Do they message me and um, they say, okay, we want, um, you know, maybe if we give them choices and say you get one to 10, 10 to oh. whatever, you give them like three or four choices and, and category choices, 
and no, I send all, it all out. You have to do is you'll send this over. You, you send that. You send over, over their email afterwards. Okay. Like, we wrap all this up, and we'll we'll contact everybody and get their list segments and get it out to them ASAP. Because one of the things that we like to do with this list is we don't just have like old lists. Like you're not. We're not going to give you a list from six weeks ago. Like when this wraps up, we're going to run them that day and get them to you within a couple of days. That way, you have the freshest information possible, so you can be looking for products and contacting suppliers. I love it, and I love that you did the. Uh, so let's recap. What are you guys going to get? You're going to get the Bundle Masterclass, uh, and it runs on both iPad and your um, cell phone and your computer. Um, kiss me, on a, I'm a bum, bundler. That's a, a t-shirt I made um, just to give you an idea. <laughs> Sometimes I bonus those out when I have some. Um, so you're going to get the Facebook group, and you're going to get the list from Dan and his team. And, but wait, there's more. You're going to get a fast action bonus that um, now, Dan, what we're going to do is we're going to break up everybody who registers by the deadline. And I'll tell you the deadline in a second. Everybody who registers by the deadline is going to get the bonuses that I uh, mentioned and one of Dan's lists. How many of you would be interested in a fast action bonus by taking action in the next 48 hours? Put it in the chat if you're interested in a fast action bonus. It's going to be amazing. I'll tell you what in a second as you're putting that in the chat. So let's do the math. Remember, I like numbers. If you create just 10 bundles, and each of those bundles has a net of $10, and you sell just 50 of that bundle, of those 10 bundles a month, very doable, very doable. That equals $5,000 net monthly profit. That equals 60,000 net annual from just 10 bundles. So my goal is to create 10 bundles a month. Now, not all of them are going to be a hit, okay? And we do talk about um, listing optimization and, and how to drive outside traffic and how to do pay-per-click. My goal for you is to get organic reach on your listings. Um, but when you have, like, let's say you've got 50 bundles that make $10 each and sell 50 a month, do the math on that, guys. Um, this is very, very real. Um, most of my business is based on wholesale bundles, and then I'm moving into private label. I'm taking the bundles that are doing really well, and I'm now going direct to manufacture and having versions of those bundles manufactured with my name on it, with my um, label on it, um, you know, private label, what private label sellers do. So this is very doable. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of fast action bonuses, but you need to sign up by Saturday night. That's two days from now. I'm going to give you 48 hours plus a couple of hours. And here's what I'm going to give you. You're going to get all the bonuses that I mentioned above, plus we're going to give you an additional, a second TWF product list in any category. We're going to give you, I'm going to double the amount of done for you bundles that you get. I'm going to give you another 10 done for you bundle concepts. It doubles your bundling power right away. Um, this alone, that, that done for your bundles, people who say, I'm not creative or I don't have time to get through, you know, the entire course to start bundling right now. I want it now, right? Those people who want to start bundling right away and they want to leverage what's in my head right now to get their bundles done. Um, the, the done for you bundles, you now get 20 of them plus all of the variations of them. So there's literally hundreds of concepts hundreds of concepts. I'm not sharing these, this bundle, done for you bundles um, document with anybody else but the people who register um, through Dan. Okay, so I'm creating this. I'm pulling them all out of my, uh, uh, my, uh, my brainstorming journal for you guys, for this. I, I'm not sharing them anywhere else, just for you. And then the physical bundling month and calendar, I just added this today because it's so cool. I ordered one of these for myself. It's not my product, but it's a magnetic dry erase calendar with pens that you hang on your wall. And um, it's, I'm going to mail it to you, so I'm going to go on Amazon. And it's cool because it's a bundle, which I really liked. It's a private label bundle. So I'm going to uh, buy that for you and mail it to you. Um, so that here's what it looks like. It's a physical bundling calendar um, with a couple of dry erase markers and a notepad too. So you can start making notes on the bundles that you want to start researching. And then you hang this on your wall and that event calendar I'm giving you, you can even put those events on your calendar for each month and then plan out this week. I'm going to create a, I'm going to research a bundle on XYZ niche. And this week I'm going to research a bundle and it is so feasible. Did you see all the ideas that we generated just in the chat in this webinar? So many, I mean, months and months worth of ideas. You just put them in here and just say once a week, you're going to start researching a specific niche bundle. So you're going to get that, but only as a fast action bonus, only for the people who sign up between now and Saturday night at bundlemasterclass.com slash 
TWF. And you have to put this um, forward slash TWF after that in order to get any of the bonuses. So bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. And everything on that page, it's going to spell out. So don't worry that you didn't catch any of this because I know go fast. But when you go to that website, it's going to give you kind of recap everything I've just told you. Um, and you get access to the whole course right away, plus the Facebook group right away, plus the bonuses. Uh, now, I deliver the bonuses. Uh, I'll, do, I'll send you out the bundle, um, the Dumb For You bundles. The other bonuses, it might take a couple of days to get to you because Dan's got, got to coordinate it with Dan. Um, it'll be after um, the registration period is over. So here's the registration period. So the fast action bonuses, you get all the bonuses plus the fast action when you enroll by 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday, December 1st. The, if you don't make it till then, you have until Tuesday to get all the bonuses except the fast action. If you don't take advantage of the fast action, you have um, till Tuesday, December, I wrote it down so I didn't get the date wrong, December 4th at 11.59 p.m. to enroll in the Bundle Masterclass uh, in order to get all of the bonuses except the fast action. So for you people who take action really fast and you jump on things and you're hustlers, like I know you are because we've been talking about it throughout this webinar, um, and you take action right now, you get the fast action bonuses. Go do it right now. Bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. I can't wait to see you in the course tonight. You have through Saturday night to get those fast action bonuses. Get double the amount of done for you bun bundles, 20 of them, and double the amount of um, fresh pulled lists of products that are selling based on the wholesale formula sourcing criteria. So it's a double whammy. Dan, I see you shaking your head. Let's see what we got in the Q and A. Absolutely. Um, I was going to say that's a fantastic offer. I, I really do. I, I, it's, it's very easy to get behind this offer because it, it's a lot of value and it's incredibly cheap. Like, oh, and I gave you, yeah, I gave you guys a discount price. The price is going up to four ninety nine in January. Um, no discounts will be offered after January. None. Uh, I've been doing business with Dan for quite some time. Going through the wholesale formula and implementing that in my business was a game changer for my income. So I'm offering that hundred dollars off for his group. So three ninety nine. It's it's a crazy price. Absolutely. Now let's give them even more value, Barbara. We're going to jump Bring in and on. tackle this Q and A. All right. right. We have Jenny who says, can I do bundles from Australia? Well, let's go ahead and change that question to, can I do bundles from anywhere in the entire world? It doesn't matter where you're located. Cause let's think about it. Bundling is a concept that creates a product based on customers, passions, and problems. You can do bundling and not even sell on Amazon. Now this course is geared towards Amazon sellers, but if you lived in Australia and decided you wanted to create bundles and go up to your local farmer's market and sell them during the weekend, you could. And you would undoubtedly sell more because you're not just selling a one of, of you know, one product, you're selling a solution. So it doesn't matter where you're located or even what platform you're selling on. The concept of bundling is about meeting the needs of a target market with products that complement each other in such a way that that particular buyer, that target market says, shut up and take my money. I want that. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So next up we have Daniel who says, my main question is how do I get suppliers to approve me to be a seller? So many wholesalers refuse to sell to, sell to me because I only sell on Amazon. That's they you, Dan. Sell to me because I'm an Amazon only seller. How do I convince them? Well, first off, you need to be able to deliver them value. For, like, that's, that's the first and foremost thing. Being told no is not a bad thing. It's a frustrating thing occasionally, but it's not a bad thing. It's an actual opportunity to develop a real relationship that allows you to make a lot of money. Now, in that, by, you know, being that it's a more exclusive opportunity means that it's harder to do, right? So you have to focus on the value you can deliver. Now, some of the value that you could deliver is actually adding bundles. This is a yep. way to deliver value. For example, if you could take a dog treat and pair it with another product that had a great search volume and explain it to the company. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm going to illustrate my crazy brainstorming brain. A dog treat and a dog treat launcher. Absolutely. So there's this dog treat launch you put uh, and, and you hit the uh, trigger and it throws the dog treat for you. 
Right. Now, if, if I were looking at a way to deliver additional value to this dog treat brand, and I could say, look, we would want to pair your product with a dog treat launcher. Now, before this, I'll be honest, I'll be honest, Robert, I did not know what a dog treat launcher was 30 <laughs> seconds ago. But anyway, you so you are hilarious. It with a they're, really, they're really hilarious. <laughs> and and you explain to them that this is how we're going to get you additional traffic and sales. We're going to help. We're going to combine the keywords that you guys bring to the table with the keywords that this product already has. And that's going to help to deliver us new traffic, right? And that's what everybody's looking for. That's what, that's what companies want. They want new customers. And the reason they don't want to work with more Amazon sellers most of the time is more Amazon sellers doesn't equate to more sales or customers. So all they're doing is taking that pie and shrinking it for the sellers they're already working with. So, they, you know, whenever we're talking about adding value, that's the reason why, is we want you to be able to come in and change that sales pie instead of taking a slice out, making it, making it bigger. Bundles are definitely a way to be able to do that. So, basically, that the, the wholesale supplier is your customer. If you look at it from a customer-centric point of view, you have to ask, why don't they want to sell to Amazon to any more Amazon sellers put yourself in their shoes and the answer is they're not going to sell any more product unless you bring the value proposition of bundling and you say hey look we're not going to hop on any listings we're going to create value from what you've already got by adding other things and creating its whole new thing over here that will create sales that you didn't have to a product that doesn't exist yet yep then next up we have Neil Neil says, do you have multiple seller accounts for your different bundle niches? No. Right. It, absolutely. You can carry this under one umbrella. It's, uh, you know, it's just like, it, it, think, of your, think of your bundle as just a single product, right? Because that's effectively what it is. It's, it may be a whole bunch of products mixed into one, but that package, that is one product. So it's just another product in your selling account. Yep. Um, then we have... Miss Crystal Bridges, she says, what brand name do you use when you bundle, uh, when you bundle, if the products are all different brands and how do you handle the UPC code for the bundle? That was an amazing question. I was waiting for that question. So this actually is kind of a segue from Neil's question. Um, so I only have one account, but if you guys go search uh, for like that magnetic calendar, right? That, that magnetic whiteboard calendar, you'll see a lot of private label sellers. And go to that pri the, one of the private label sellers account and you'll see that they have different brands listed on the left hand side. If you go to their storefront, they'll, um, maybe they have uh, organ kitchen organization stuff under one brand name and that's when they create the listing. They put that, you know, kitchen organization stuff is their brand name and then another, um, organ another brand name for their whiteboard stuff like office organization limited is their brand name for the office stuff. So you can create different brand names for different types of bundles. Um, Amazon is a moving target, as you all know. So I have to always say when talking about what Amazon's TOS, terms of service are, that at the moment it comes out of my mouth, it is very likely true. Uh, that being said, I always say that if, if a question relates to Amazon's TOS, listen to what I say, but then take it with a grain of salt and go ask Amazon and get the response in writing. So mixing brands, uh, I don't use name brand products in my bundles unless I'm, uh, I have negotiated with the supplier and gotten permission to put something together with their bundle. Um, and then I'll even ask them if they will allow me to use one of their registered, GS1 registered UPC codes. Okay. So what Amazon says about UPC codes is you may not use third party use of UPC codes and you must request a GTIN exemption from Amazon. And it used to be a little bit clunky to do in the past year, but they just changed the form. And you go over into the help section in your seller central account and you type in GTIN um, or in the bundle masterclass, it gives you the link to. Uh, and it will send you a form where you just type in the name of your bundle and upload an image and request an exemption. And within, sometimes it's minutes, sometimes it's a couple of hours, uh, they approve the exemption. And then you can create the listing. And when you create a new listing under the UPC dropdown, where it allows you to choose an EIN or EAN or UPC or whatever, it'll have GTIN. And you choose that. Okay. Hopefully that answered the question. That was actually a great answer. It was a great question too. It was. Um, 
before the next question, I want to go ahead and say congratulations to Donna. She said, done, purchased your course. Way to take action, Donna. Donna. Can't wait to send you those fast action bonuses. Um, we have Susan who said there were, uh, there were, you said there were three questions. One was, what does the market need? Why do they need it? And then number three, she just missed it. Okay. So uh, that'll all be in uh, module one of the Bundle Masterclass. So it's... Um, you start with passions and problems, just like we did when we did some brainstorming. You say, you ask the why question, why are they buying this? You know, what, what problem is it solving, right? What problem is it solving and what else do they buy? So why are they buying this? What else are they buying? What else are they buying? Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> All right. It. Next up, we have Josh. And this one's been asked quite a few times. So uh -oh. will there be a recording? And it is? Yes. Absolutely. All right. So, and we will email that out. Um, so it takes a couple of minutes to a couple of minutes. It takes an hour to convert the file, then an hour to upload the file, depending on my internet connection. So um, my goal is to get it available to you late tonight, or at the very latest tomorrow morning. Look in your email from an email from me and or from Dan. We're both going to be sending emails out, and the recording will be there. Yep. And then Santiago wanted to know, do they have to have a special UPC? So there's, we're getting into some repetitive one and Pat, Patty uh, about the brand name. Um, oh, there is one more other option for UPCs. I apologize. Uh, so let's say uh, you can go to gs1.org and you can register your very own UPC codes. Now it's a little bit more costly. So it doesn't make sense to do it when you're first testing bundles. That being said, um, if I have a bundle that truly hits and I own everything and, uh, and it's, it's consistently over the course of six months selling consistently well, it's not seasonal, it's evergreen, and I've tested it and tweaked it, I may consider um, going private label and you know, going straight to a factory and having that bundle recreated with maybe even a better and more improvement, but then attaching my own GS1 registered UPC code to it. Do you know how much a GS1 code is off the top of your it head? It depends on how many you buy. So if you buy a small quantity, it's more expensive. Maybe 12 bucks each, I think. I mean, uh, uh, no, don't quote me. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. I'm sorry. It, 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 I, I, if I remember right, it wasn't prohibitively expensive, though. It was still pretty affordable. Even well, that being said, if you're, if you're testing a bundle and you only have a quantity of 36, right. I wouldn't you, you buy my own GS1 codes for that. I'd only do it for the ones that are consistent. <laughs> That, that have shown consistent sales. But the GTIN exemption is so easy and fast, you don't need to. Oh, wow. This is funny. Steven posted um, that he just got this. He got his GTIN approval while he was on this webinar. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. so I was telling you the truth within, within a minute to an hour. <laughs> I love it, which is really impressive seeing as we're in the middle of Q4. All right. Uh, the next question is, how many in volume do you feel is a successful initial test? How well, many units would you guess? If we, if we just use uh, Anita's, um, uh, my cat's on the other side of the door screaming at me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. If we just use Anita, um, let's see, she did 36 of them, I think. Let's see what she did here. Let's see. Yeah, I think it was 36. Yeah, she did, just did 36 of them. And um, they started selling the second they hit the warehouse. There's Anita. She's so cool. Right? She, uh, it's very same day. She only did 36 of them to test it. And then she like went like panicked and built a whole bunch more and sent them in. And now is, I think it was at .ca. She sells on, cause she's in Canada. So she sells on both Canada and US. Uh, so you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot to test. I mean, that's one of the, that's one of the great things about bundles is bundles are, they, it, it's not, it's typically not expensive to get in and test something and find out if it works or not. And it's generally, even the bundles that don't work, usually you can get out of them really easy and don't, don't yeah. not have a lot of that inventory. It's, 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 it's pretty, it really is a pretty safe model. Hey, um, uh, hey, uh, Dan, go ahead and type in the chat, um, the bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF just so that they can click on it. So they've got it. They don't have to type it in. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Hey, you guys have been so patient and um, so wonderful hanging out on this uh, webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time. I just want to honor you for taking all the time uh, out of your evening to share with me and Dan tonight. Uh, I hope you got a lot of value out of this and I'm happy to answer any more questions. So any, what else we got there? 
Oh, wow. This is a great question from Laura. She says, um, hey, Laura. Uh, 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 she <laughs> says, that, any advice for when you can't get a G10 uh, exemption for a bundle? I've not had the, uh, oh, okay, well, I'm going to um, go back to what I said before about Amazon. So I've not had that happen. But if Amazon doesn't let me do something, I don't go on a Facebook group and ask. I go directly to Amazon and say, I can't get this GTA exemption to go through. It's not allowing it. What do I need to do? Is there something hazmat in my bundle that you consider hazmat? Ask Amazon and then um, make sure that you get the writing in answer or answer in writing. Whoa, uh, make sure you get the answer in writing. Sorry about that. <laughs> so that's a question for Amazon. And, and then, that's also, here's, here's, remember one of the slides I talked about, people who overthink, that's an overthinking question. So that's something that it's not happened, right? It, it hasn't happened. So don't focus on it. Focus on the right thing. Focus on creating, doing your market research, understanding a target market, doing your product research, your competitive research, um, optimizing your listings, those things you have control over. All right. The next question is, are there sources you would recommend to learn how to create bundle listings on Amazon? And I can go ahead and answer this one. I would recommend Barbara Drazga. There's an and entire module on creating the listings. Yep. Everything from keyword research to actually creating the listing, optimizing. Uh, we've got, there's two hour long videos from a professional photographer uh, showing you in their studio how to create your, um, your images so that they psychologically guide the viewer to buying it. That's how detailed the bundle masterclass is. So it, they, they show you how to um, stage your products so it leads the buyer's eye to the buy box. And there's two full one hour videos from that professional photographer in the bundle masterclass. And he doesn't teach this anywhere else. He did it because it was a favor to me. And then, oh, two, I just want to give another little cool update. Uh, Jenny and Adrian just said they joined. Hi, Jenny. Oh, that you? was super awesome. Yep. So Way happy to, to have you. Guys. Um, so, yeah, I, honestly, if, if I ever have a question, if I ever had a question about a bundle, the person I would ask is Barbara. And that's why I'm on a webinar with Barbara. Is yeah, I, I know you don't do a lot of webinars, Dan. You've got your your you got your hands full of a lot of things. So I am <laughs> so blessed that you uh, you're on with me tonight. I could have just been a talking head, but it's so much fun to hang out with you. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know it's late there. Yeah, yeah, we're get, we're getting close to ten o'clock. Uh, All right, any last minute questions? I want to make sure I'm honoring everybody's time. Go to bundlemasterclass.com/tw. TWF and remember you have 48 hours to get the fast action bonuses only 48 hours by Saturday night uh, and when you see this replay it's gonna be less than 48 hours so Saturday night 1159 p.m. Pacific you get all the bonuses plus the fast action bonuses and if you miss that deadline you have till Tuesday to get the regular bonuses so guys take advantage of it right now I don't do those done for you bundles um, unless it's a bonus for something like this. Um, so it's not, they're not publicly available. So please go ahead and grab all those. Don't forget, take advantage of me, please. It's only $3.99. Uh, I know, I mean, there are a lot of courses out there for um, a lot of people can't, don't have that capital to invest in a higher end tra training course. You're not there yet and that's okay. The bundle masterclass is a great stepping stone to getting to the next level in your business. It's only $3.99. Um, let's take a, let's, let's do some rapid fire questions to get through some of these. Okay. All right. We got Matt that Matt says, how much time will it take to do this properly? How, for example, let's, let's think, <laughs> think about how long would it take to, how long would it take for someone to implement this? How long would it take you or how long would it take me? So it would take me because I know my process inside and out and I can run through it in my sleep. It would take me all of about 20 minutes to build a bundle concept, beginning right. to end finding product, 20 to 30 minutes without training uh, a week, two weeks. Once you learn my process, it goes a lot faster because you start incorporating it into your thinking. Absolutely. And then we have, do you use, do you use brand name products in your bundle? Yes. Caveat. So one of the brand names I use, it's actually a brand that doesn't sell their products on Amazon until they met me and I signed an exclusive with them. 
So when they bring out new products, they let me know what they are and I create their listings of just the individual products. And then I send, I, I create a bundle and then send them the bundle items and they create the bundles for me. FN skew it and send the bundles and uh, they also send the, um, the listings, the individual products into Amazon for me. That doesn't happen all the time. I got lucky. But in that case, it's their branded product, but I create bundles with their products. A uh, good question here from Steve. Steve says, how difficult, difficult is it to bundle grocery items? And are there any categories you would suggest staying away from? That's two questions. And I, I'm very big on asking the right questions. So <clears throat> reword, how difficult is it? Because you're implying in that question that it's difficult. So let's reframe that question and say, can I create bundles in the grocery uh, category? Absolutely. Think about it. When you eat groceries, we, we just brainstormed, you guys brainstormed, what was that, uh, five ingredients, meals. That's a great grocery item, right? So you guys already brainstormed some grocery bundles in that that's how hard it is. That's how easy it is, right? And then what was the second part of that question, Dan? Are there any categories that you would recommend staying away from? So remember, and again, I know it's a mind shift. We're not looking at categories because products sell in every category on Amazon. Right? Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Product is, okay, so we're not starting our search, our understanding at categories or products level. We're going up to passionate markets and problems that need to be solved. And it doesn't matter what category it's in. Doesn't matter what product category your end result bundle will end up being in because you're going to put your customer centric eye, eyeglasses on and try to find, and not try to, you're going to find product ideas that will solve a problem or feed a passion. I know it's a little bit of a mindset shift, but trust me, when you get through all the lessons in module one with the exercises, you'll get it. It'll click in. I promise. All right. The next question, can you take the course at your own pace? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's and one of the things. Back to it. Right. And that's one of the things I definitely wanted to mention is uh, you know, Barbara is, Bar Barbara is very passionate about what she does. She's always updating her course. And once you buy it, uh, you have access, you, you have uh, li lifetime access. So it's, uh, you know, the, the, it is the gift that keeps on giving. And it, it, when she raises her price next year, you've already got it. So you don't have to do it again. You don't have to buy again. You don't have to pay any more money. You still get those same updates that the people who are paying more money are getting. Yep. All right. Next question is, Oh, this is a good question. And I, well, it's, it, it's one of those questions. questions. Right. They're all good questions. Andrew says, how long does it take once you've created a bundle idea to get up and running and the traffic flowing for profit? Okay, so it's one of those lawyer questions that you answer, it depends. It yeah. depends. How well did you do your keyword research? How much competition do you have for those keywords? Are you trying to go just for organic rank? Are you putting pay-per-click? Are you doing any outside of Amazon advertising? By the way, um, there's also modules in there on Pinterest advertising and Facebook advertising uh, in the Bundle Masterclass. So uh, I also show you how to drive traffic outside of Amazon to your listings. So the answer is it depends. Again, if we use Anita's, uh, Anita Breeze, uh, her example, it, the minute it hit, she's so good at creating listings. She's so good at doing her market research before she even sends the bundles in that when it hits the warehouse, it started selling that day. So that doesn't always happen, but the better you get at optimizing your listings and in order to do that, understanding your target market is the key. Yep. Then the more it'll sell, the, the faster it'll sell when it hits the warehouse. Yep, absolutely agree with that. Hey guys, uh, let me let me caveat here because I know you know we're all looking for uh, a lot of people are looking for the um, the guaranteed work. This works and will work every time and work with with anything you do, right? So if you were to go out and get a real job and you uh, went to the interview and you asked the the, the potential employer, so um, can I count on having this job for twenty years? They can't answer that because right? stuff happens. So as a business owner, ambiguity is kind of built in, isn't it? So I believe in mitigating risk. I say that throughout this, this training and throughout the Bundle Masterclass. What can I do to mitigate my risk to increase the chances that what I'm attempting to do will be successful? Well, and it's not just, I have control over. It's not just that. It's, 
you know, whenever you, you're mitigating risk by also not going, you're not going too deep. Like no. you're, you're able, you know, it, it, not until I test. And that's the other thing I build out niches. Once I test a niche and it, it goes well, I'll start building out related. And I, I teach that in the bundle masterclass, how to build out an entire uh, product line in specific niches. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry to cut you off, Dan. What were you saying? No, I mean, that, that was it. It was, it, you know, even when, even when you miss and the, even when you miss making these types of bundles, you don't miss bad. Like no, you're, I learned you're something. not going deep enough with, with, uh, with inventory to actually get truly hurt. And, and as you know, whenever you find those successful products, I, I, it's more to Andrew's question of, hey, you know, how long does this take? And it, it's true that it varies, but like, that's the point is, it, you know, realistically you can launch multiple bundles at one time. You can find the ones that are working and, and just dedicate to those. Um, but you know, she'd mentioned, it, you know, some people can have success immediately when they have the right products and you will get better over time. Yeah. And with a question like that, it's too vague. I can't, and anybody who, who would answer your question, Andrew, um, how long does it take? And, oh, you could get it done in a week. Don't believe people who like have that knee jerk reaction to a question that's vague like that. Um, because there's too many variables. I don't know. How good are you at doing bundles? Have you learned the process? How many bundles are you setting in? Are you doing outside? Like all of these variables need to be answered before I can give you even a little bit of a time frame. So I always endeavor to be as honest as I can with you. And that's my honest answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We have, um, I saw one that I really liked. Uh, Sheila. Yep. She says, can I get a refund if I change my mind and decide this course isn't for me? So Sheila, I encourage everybody to go through this. This is a digital course and I don't give refunds. Um, and I've never been asked for a refund. I do encourage you to get all the way through um, module one and all the lessons and do the homework and the lessons. If you feel it's not for you, then I uh, would recommend you don't sign up. If this, if this hour and a half that you spent with me, doesn't convince you that this content and me as a teacher is a good fit for you, then the entire um, bundle masterclass is more of me doing what we just did tonight. Uh, it won't be a good fit for you. And I'm okay with that. All right. So the next question is, is there a target bundle price uh, for wholesale? Like say question. $50 or say $20 or more. That's a great question. So um, Dan, what are your criteria? What is your um, price, lowest price criteria when you source wholesale? Well, it, it's actually started changing. We were $20 and higher. And with, uh, with small and light, we've started definitely looking at it and trying to find better sourcing methods for cheaper products too. Interesting. I went the other direction. My minimum bundle amount is $25 for me. Everybody's got their own criteria, but here's what you have to look at. Again, it's the numbers, right? So, um, Amazon charges a pick and pack fee regardless of the price of your product. So if you're selling a, a $9.99 product, like $10, they're still charging a dollar as opposed to charging a $30, uh, selling a $30 product, they're still taking a dollar for that. So your, your fees as they relate to the selling price become lower comparatively, the higher the dollar amount. Um, and two, if, I, if I'm trying to sell a $15 bundle, that's scary to me because if something happens and it doesn't sell and I have to do pay-per-click and I have to do Facebook ads, I have to do paid ads and I have to lower the price to get traction, I don't have enough room in there, right? Where if I'm doing a $30 bundle, I have more room in there to drive traffic if I need to. All right. So let's take about five more questions, Barbara. Okay. So I'm going to try to make them really good. I'm going to try to make them really good in that way. Try to stump me. <laughs> I'm going to try to stump you now. All right. Now this one is, I'll be honest, this one, I've seen it a lot. Um, what about affordable packaging? If you want to, well, I want you to actually answer this a couple different ways. Um, number one is what if you want to do customized packaging? Are there options for that? And do you ever discuss any of those maybe in the, in the master class? Um, okay. So this, this person might not have been on this entire webinar because uh, I gave some links just uh, three off the top of my head and uh, examples and some packaging and uh, one specific example. And if you go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF on the top hand, um, on the top bar, you'll see some uh, an option that says course outline. Click on that. There's a video on that page showing you three bundles that I created. So you're always going to hear me say Google is your friend. 
So if I had Google up right now, I would go show you how to find packaging options. It's very, very easy. And I do that in the bundle masterclass. Yes. Under listing, uh, creating your bundles, there is a, a lesson on packaging. What's next? Okay. So next question is, do we do the physical bundling and mailing to customers or who would handle that? So I highly recommend you uh, get to the point where you're outsourcing that to a prep center. Otherwise your house is going to be filled with stuff. And I think that's true for anything. Um, you you yeah. know, can you physically do it yourself? Absolutely. Should you physically do it yourself? Probably not. That being said, um, some of you folks are still doing RA and you're still prepping on your own. And this is your option right now, doing it yourself. Totally cool. I started, <laughs> I started bundling that um, <laughs> the rubber chicken. I bundled that. <laughs> right. So I started bundling by uh, creating them myself. And for sure. Totally and me and Eric have done that too. Me and Eric have definitely created our own bundles and stuff and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But you know, as Barbara said, your goal as you grow and as you start to scale will be Freedom. to move that off and, and kind of free yourself up from that. Wherever um, you are in your business right now, just uh, choose the option that's best for you, but have a goal to reach a point with your income that you can out start outsourcing the things that aren't the best use of your time. Right. And, and we actually do that. You know, we still, you know, even though we don't have our warehouse anymore, we still have several bundles that we sell and our prep center just makes those and ships them on in yeah. to Amazon, just like a normal item. Yep. Um, Three more questions. Uh, we got trying to get, I'm trying to get ones where we've not, you know, we've, we've not answered. Yeah, there's probably a lot of overlaps and you guys, if, if, um, Oh, if, this is a great one. Uh Oh, here you go. All right. Jody says, if there's a product in the, bu in the bundle that would be gated, would I first need to get ungated in that particular category? Yes. Yeah, don't try to skirt. I'm going to say it. You hear me say this a lot. Don't try to skirt Amazon's rules. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll just put something I'm gated in there and then I'll mess with the category later and to try to don't try to skirt Amazon's rules, right? If you're gated in a category and you want to sell in that category, get ungated. Period. Get ungated. Do what you got to do. All right. I like this one. I, I think this one's a, a good question for you, Barbara. How does Amazon react when you compete against their product with a bundle? Well, I'm going to preface with this is a, a you know, Amazon, does, Amazon's not going to react. You know, yeah. they, Amazon's huh. not a person. Right. Amazon's not my neighbor that I'm encroaching with my, you know, my, my minivan uh, or my weeds are like encroaching in their front yard and they're there huffing and puffing looking out the front. That's Amazon is not a person. So. Right. But this is a way that you can compete with Amazon on those items that Amazon carries without having direct competition. Like, you know, there's there, I would consider carrying a bundle with items that Amazon carries. Definitely. I would, I generally don't consider carrying products with Amazon. And it's because, yeah. you know, you just can't compete with them. It, it's yep. very hard to get the buy box. It's very hard to do it reliably. Bundles give you an option to do that with the same type of products that Amazon carries. So all those criteria that, uh, that you teach people, um, Dan, that you teach us how to, uh, you know, filter out Amazon as seller. Now we can search with Amazon as a seller for good, good selling pro, um, products that meet a certain BSR and income criteria, right? So now we can put Amazon as a seller as one of the criteria we search for in order to find niche market and bundle ideas. So all, this, all the ideas from, um, from us wholesale sourcers that you know everybody else is kind of thrown to the wayside, there's opportunity in those listings, in those products that Amazon is a seller on as a bundler. All right. Um, one more. Yep. yep one more. Uh, no, well, I actually got to say this one before we, uh, before we take that next question, Michelle says, not a question, but an acclamation. Thank you so much for your time. I love your enthusiasm, mindset, and attitude. I'm signing up tonight and can't wait to jump in and start learning. From you. We're, I'm really excited to have you as, as a master bundler in training and soon to be a master bundler. Thank you. Okay. For the last one, what do we got? Drum roll. <laughs> You guys are asking some really great questions. I'm so, I'm so pleased at uh, how everybody interacted in the chat tonight and all the great ideas you came up with. And I will put that chat in the replay as a link. When you go to watch the replay, I'll figure out how to make that link so you can download and I'll clean it up. So it's just that brainstorming session. But I wanted to, I wanted to honor you guys and say thank you for playing along. Um, this was a lot of fun tonight for me and I hope it was for you too. 
Yeah, this is absolutely. Every time you would ask them a question, they were constantly giving you answers. Like very engaged. You guys have done a fantastic job tonight. Yeah, and that doesn't always happen. Last so. one, yeah, go for it. All right. Last question. All right. I think this is a great question. And I, I'm going to preface with why I think this is a great question. I think this type of question is preparing for success, right? And so the question is, if you did a bundle for, say, 36 sets of a product, how quickly would you want to reorder those 36 units? Mm. So that's a great question. And it depends on the time of the year too, because right now, you know, if you've got something that sells out right away and you don't have stuff already headed to the warehouse. So let's just use a non Q4 answer because the um, ecosphere and Amazon is a little bit crazier this time of year, right? So an evergreen bundle, um, 36 starts selling. I know that, um, that Anita, when her, when the minute it hit the warehouse and started selling, she was out creating that bundle again. She was out creating more of that bundle in kind of a panic mode. Right. So uh, as soon as you see it selling, you want to make sure that you've got stock ready to go and ready to head in. So initially you might run out of stock. And <clears throat> what, uh, what I've heard is now I haven't verified this with Amazon, but um, I've heard in some higher, I'm in some higher level private label groups uh, is that if you close your listing, when you run out of stock, it freezes that BSR, it freezes your rank. Now, again, um, that's just what I've heard. So don't take it as, you know, law. Uh, but that way when, you're, um, when your stock hits the warehouse again and you turn on the listing again, you've got the BSR from when it was closed. You need to verify that on your own though with whatever coach you have. For what I've heard, that, that's, uh, I've, I've heard that as well. I heard it doesn't freeze it exactly, but it does slow the degradation of the rank. Yep. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I can't, can't confirm it, but. Um, you know what? That's a good problem to have. Right. That's, that's what I said. I, I, the reason I like that, that, that particular question is it was a question that was preparing for success. It was a question. You, you know what, you know what mode you go into? I call it, um, pardon my, my French a little bit. Um, when a bundle hits the warehouse and immediately starts selling multiple, I go into holy crap mode. <laughs> it's my holy crap. I got to source more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So. so cool. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Dan, for being here. And you guys all rock. And go join bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. Get in by Saturday night so I can give you guys all the cool fast action bonuses. I'll show you what they are. A lot, a lot of all these cool stuff. You get the double stuff from me, the double stuff from uh, Dan. And I'm going to buy you this really cool calendar I thought was so cool. I bought it for myself today. I'm like, oh. <gasps> I should, I should buy that for everybody and make that a bonus. So I'm actually going to pay you for that and buy it and ship it to you from Amazon from this private label seller. And it's a bundle even better. So you get to see his packaging. He, he put it in a roll. And whoever asked me about the, um, how to do packaging, check out, if you, go get the fast action bonus because then you'll get this product and you'll see he's got it like in this tube. It's not in a flat box. So he um, decreased his, uh, his cubic um, size of that product, of that fairly large product. So cool, huh? So anyway, I hope to see you guys in the Bundle Masterclass. Dan, as always, it's a pleasure, and you look fabulous. Thank you very much, and it is always a pleasure being on with you, too. You bring so much energy, so much awesome content, and you share so freely that it's, uh, it, it's just amazing being on a, on a webinar with you, Barbara. I could say right back at you. Same thing. Cool. All right. So well, thanks. Everybody... Well, over. <laughs>